in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you okay thank you for watching be blessed you know I never I never get I never stop getting humbled by the kinds of miracles and the mighty things that we hear every time we're gathered here I want to encourage us to not get used to these things you know there's a way you can get so familiar oh is the healing again oh is the breakthrough again your heart must always be in a posture where you receive every miracle no matter how great no matter how little with gratitude in your heart if it could not be done by man then he deserves the glory for it are we together if it could not be done by man then he deserves the glory for it Lord Jesus we thank you hallelujah tonight I'm going to be teaching but I really believe that um, I know we have a miracle service coming but I I just sense that as I teach tonight there will be a grace to lift burdens from people not just a grace for healing I sense this right from home that as the Word of God comes all of a sudden just in the silence you're seated inside or outside or following online you find out that a grace comes upon you prevails over you and all of a sudden a burden is lifted faith is stirred up within you you find out that one infirmity just roaming around your body just leaves just like that listen let me tell you something John chapter 11 and verse 40 said Jesus was speaking and said did I not say unto you that if you believe you will see the glory of God there is a relationship between your experience of the glory and your believing God did I not say unto you that if you believe you will see the glory if you believe if you sit down doubting wondering oh can God touch me look the, the we learn from scripture that there is nothing that is new under the Sun it's true are we together people have been oppressed and the Lord took them out of that oppression people have been challenged and the Lord took them out of it your assignment is not only to listen but to listen in faith to listen in hope expecting Acts chapter 4 when you read the Bible says the man looked at them expecting to receive something you can look casually just hoping that the service will run and finish but again your heart can be opened I really believe I'm a firm believer that every experience if God is there something must happen to you I'm not necessarily talking about falling down and manifesting physically but you should live who will not want to attend a service where you are sure you will not be the same nobody wants to attend the service and after the grace there literally is nothing you should know that you have been visited his wisdom comes his power comes his authority comes faith is built your conviction is strengthened these are characteristics of the presence of God I believe that this is what the Lord will do in the name of Jesus Christ amen where's Binga please play play me um, the strings the anointing is on him tonight you guys just follow him closely but um, I just lay down to sleep a little and then I saw him playing the string so I knew that um, just just play minor keys for me and let's trust God to do 
great things tonight. Lord, we bless you. One of the all over the world, this is this is the period of Easter, and generally speaking, once it is Easter period across the Christian community, pastors usually narrow their teachings around redemption, around the cross. Um, every man of God attempts to help the people or remind them once again of the significance of the cross, the significance of the death of Jesus, his passion and everything revolving around it. And um, as I meditated upon the things that I'll be sharing tonight, I, I just felt very strongly stirred in my heart that the Lord would want me to teach rather on um, issues that relate to taking advantage um, validating the death of Jesus his resurrection using our lives you see as a leader I have had the privilege of blessing people teaching them truth and all of that my greatest joy is to see the word produced in your own life so I can imagine that the joy that is in the heart of the father is not just that we keep commemorating periods like this but that we walk in the experience of what that death was meant for are we together now when the father looks from the throne and sees people dying of lassa fever dying being buffeted by satan it doesn't matter what discussion about easter we make is a mockery hallelujah the experience of the victory of christ is what gives um consolation to the heart of the father especially at periods like this so i just thought to share something with us tonight that i believe will bless us open your heart and um, let's see what the lord will guide us to understand first corinthians chapter 2 thank you jesus let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover Let it cover all the earth. 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 First Corinthians chapter 2 if we can read it it's a long reading but let's use amplified Paul began to teach something very powerful and I want us to look very closely verse 1 it says as for myself brethren when I came to you were using amplified I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony and evidence or mystery and secret of God concerning what he has done through Christ for the salvation of men in lofty words or human philosophy and wisdom there are 16 verses we are reading everything for I resolved to know nothing to be acquainted with nothing to make display of the knowledge of nothing you know among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified now Paul begins by saying look when I came my goal was to present to you Christ crucified and then to buttress on the significance of what that should mean to your life 
So he said, I have many things. What he's trying to say here is that, look, I'm a Pharisee. I'm not dull. There are many other things I can tell you, but I have limited the scope of my communication to you to reveal Christ and him crucified. I could tell you about all that things, but when I came to you, I have an option to teach you other things. But for some reason, my goal is to be able to present to you Christ crucified and then to be able to help you understand the full import, the gravity of what his crucifixion can bring. Are you understanding what he's saying here now? And so he's saying, and I was, you know, fear, trembling, and so on and so forth. Verse 4. Sorry, Amplified opens it up so I will jump some things. Now, verse 4 says, And my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive, enticing, and plausible words of wisdom, but they were in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. Now, don't miss the context. The context is Christ crucified. He says the theme of my communication is Christ crucified. So every other thing that follows from this explanation is predicated upon that foundation, Christ. When I came to you, my message started with Christ crucified. So every other thing that I'm going to reveal to you is connected to this foundation of Christ crucified. Are we following now? So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, human philosophy, but in the power of God. Verse 6. It says, yet when we were among the full grown, you know, King James says that we speak this wisdom. Give us, give us King James and then we'll run to Amplify to see verse 6. We'll, we'll just play around with it. It says, how be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature. Now, so, look at his progression. The apostle starts by saying, look, ladies and gentlemen, when I came to you, I had an option to begin to teach you other things. To teach you the, the, the to display the fruits of my intelligence. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a doctor of the law. I'm a learned colleague. But I chose to limit myself to present to you Christ crucified. And then he begins to say that I have done this because I don't want you to just brag about intelligence. I want your life to be limited to this reality alongside the blessings that come from it. Are we together now? Then he is now switching and saying, look, that we speak wisdom. So he has moved to the subject of wisdom now. Christ crucified and then wisdom. Yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Verse 7. It says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now, look very carefully. Don't assume you understand what he's saying. We speak the wisdom of God, but is communicated in a mystery. Christ crucified. The foundation of my teaching. When I came to you, I came to teach you something about Easter. But I'm more concerned. I have other options, but I have noticed a lapse in your life. And there is a dimension I want you to come into that is tied to the revelation of Christ crucified alongside the benefits that comes from it. And then he says that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Then he says even the hidden wisdom. Let's see what Amplify says about it. 7 amplify but rather what we are setting forth is the wisdom of God once hidden from the human understanding and now revealed to us by God it says that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glory amplified says our glorification let's go back to King James so the Bible says 7 please and King James I'm, I'm explaining something just walk with me media verse 7 and King James but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery listen carefully it says which God ordained for our what so Christ crucified we see the cross there is a revelation from there and part of the benefits that come from there is an ability of the spirit to access what the Bible calls the hidden wisdom and it says whoever can, can access this that God preserved it that it is this formula 
that will be responsible for the glorification of the saints. That this hidden wisdom, whatever it is, has a part to play in our revealing the glory of God. That God himself ordained it before the foundations of the world for our glory. Verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, now he connects it back again. For had they known it, they would not have crucified. So if they did not crucify, there would not be the issue of the cross and there will not be access to this hidden wisdom that has to do with our glorification. Verse 9. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard. This is in context of that same wisdom. Are we together now? When you're studying scripture, make sure you keep following the line. Don't just speak a scripture and delve. He's communicating something here. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. Now we see the Holy Spirit introduced into the equation. The Bible says, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god the deep things of god not the things of god the deep things of god so he starts by saying i came to you and i present to you christ crucified that if you understand the mystery of Christ crucified alongside the benefits one of the benefits if you are well taught one of the things you should be taught is that the implication of his crucifixion now has brought you to a realm where you can access what the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God so Christ did not just die just to give us eternal life alone yes ultimately but that there are there are certain implications of his death and one of them tied to his crucifixion are we together now is the ability to access what the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god and the bible says that hidden wisdom was prepared by god himself that at a point in the church age man will buy a technology called a mystery Remember, he said, we speak this wisdom. The goal is for you to access it. But between you and that wisdom is a mystery you must understand. It is not the wisdom that is the mystery. The mystery is the name of the technology that transfers that mystery, that wisdom from God to you. He said, we speak it in a mystery. I go to Sabo in a vehicle. The vehicle is not me. The goal is to take me to Sabo but the means of transportation is called a vehicle the means of accessing this wisdom the bible says is a mystery so we are going to find out what this mystery is tonight and the bible says whoever finds that mystery will access the wisdom of god and the result of that encounter is glory glory that the saints in light don't just become glorified just because they want to on account of the death of Jesus Christ there is something that his death granted unto us are we together now and the Bible says that if you find out one of those things that the death of Jesus Christ provided for you the hidden wisdom of God that is accessed through a mystery I stop because remember Paul is teaching here and then Paul now begins to introduce the person of the Holy Spirit as the searcher of the wisdom of God but he said my, my point now let's leave the Holy Spirit issue we are coming there what is the mystery that communicates this thing that the Bible calls the deep things the deep things what are they because whoever can access these deep things the bible calls them the hidden wisdom that not even the men of the world nor the princes knew if if they had known that the goal of jesus's death among other things was to grant us access to that mystery so that we will be glorified he said they would have made sure the lord of glory did not die are we together
Galatians chapter 3. We are coming back here. Galatians chapter 3. Please give us from verse 10. You will be so blessed tonight. My prayer for you is that the things you are going to learn, you will so understand them and they will produce strange victory in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the cost, for it is written, cost is everyone that continued not in the things that are written in the book of the law. Read on. Next verse, please. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. 12. It says, and the law is not of faith, but that man, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. 13. Then it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. And it tells us how he did that. It says, being made a curse, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. We see the cross back again. Are we together now? Remember Paul said, Christ crucified. Christ crucified. That's his message. When I came to you, I looked at a lapse in your life that the foundation to remedy that lapse is a revelation of Christ crucified and the full import of what the crucifixion does to you. But I'm choosing an aspect of it that you can access the deep things of God on the strength of this revelation of Christ crucified and on the strength of those deep things, you can manifest glory. The Bible says that the blessing of Abraham, I've taught you, the blessing of Abraham is not cars, not money. The blessing of Abraham is not even what we call the blessing. The blessing of Abraham is what the Bible calls justification by faith. That's the blessing of Abraham. The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So we like faithful Abraham, we believe God and then we are justified by believing him. That the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And notice this. He says that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So all of this journey is to make sure that even when we are justified, that's not the end of it. That we get to a point where we may receive the promise of the Spirit. There is something about a technology that transfers the spirit into a man. And the Bible says it was because Christ became a curse on the cross. Are we together now? And then we believe in that substitutionary sacrifice like we call it. And the implication is that we are justified by faith. What does that mean? We are declared not guilty. We are declared blameless. Having the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is his very nature. Are we together? On account of that righteousness, the Bible now declares that the Spirit of God can come upon us. We receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Then it stops there. Paul now is trying to explain to the people. When the Holy Spirit comes, what does he do? When the Holy Spirit comes, what is the implication? If there was no cross, there would not be death. If there was no death, there would not be burial. There would not be resurrection. There would not be exaltation, justification. And that meant that there would be no access to receive the life of God. There would be no access to receive justification. And ultimately, we will not be able to access the person of the Holy Spirit. The final journey was to make sure that every man can become a host of the Spirit of God. And the Bible says, if Satan had known that that death was a string leading from one place, they will make sure that the process did not even start. Are you getting what Paul is teaching them now? Had they known that the whole goal was not to punish a man, but to use a man like a scapegoat and transfer the Spirit of God in men, he said they would insist that Jesus did not die. Are we together? Let's go back to our scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, just leave us stand there. But God hath revealed them to us by his spirit. Are you seeing now? So, he has revealed them to us by his spirit. 
we have accessed that spirit and so we have capacity to receive revelation from him and then he says something interesting he says for the spirit which spirit the same spirit we have received he's telling us certain things the spirit can do and one of it is that the spirit can search all things the deep things of God now we are investigating how to arrive there the Bible tells us where the deep things are stored. We are going to see it closely. It says the deep things of God. Then he now digresses to explain something. He said, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of that man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit. Are we together now? So we know that the only person who can access whatever it is in God is the spirit of God. You cannot receive anything from God without the Spirit helping you. Do we agree? Next verse. Now we have received. Say, I have received. It says, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Why did we receive him? It says that we may know. That we may, not just that we may feel spiritual. That the spirit among other things is resident in us that we may know the things that are freely given did you hear the bible says god prepared certain things to be given to the saints for our glorification go back please to verse just go back to verse um, five now i believe from where we talk about the mystery it says, okay, verse 3. I think it's verse 3. Um, okay, 6. 6. 6. I think it should be 6. How be it? Thank you. We speak the wisdom of God among them that are perfect. The word perfect is matured. Yet, not the wisdom of this world, not the prince of this world that come to naught. Verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So, this wisdom is spoken, but it is spoken in a mystery. A mystery that God ordained. Are we together? And the Bible lets us know that by that mystery, we can access everything that is given to us. There is a spiritual system for accessing the deep things of God. Listen, if you understand what I teach you tonight, you will know from where strange and unusual songs come from. If you understand what I teach you tonight, you will know where strange ideas and supernatural solutions come from. The Bible tells you that in, at, as a result of the death of Christ, that you can access the mind not just the mind of Christ, the mind of the Father, that resident there is the hidden wisdom called the deep things of God. He says whoever can find it, the Holy Spirit brings it to you, but there is a mystery you must engage. Listen, the Holy Spirit is many things. One of what he is, is a searcher. But he does not just search until the mystery is engaged. There is a mystery that you engage. He no longer becomes a comforter. He no longer becomes a... He starts to search. There is something that can be done on earth that switches the ministry of the spirit to go to the mind of the father and start searching the deep things and bring it to you. And he says, if you find it, your life will spell glory. Paul is teaching them. Paul looked at their lives and said no everything i see happening to you should happens to human beings i don't see you accessing realities from another realm he said let me teach you something i i wanted to teach you a lot of things but i see there is no glory in your life let's start the lecture the foundation is christ crucified that when jesus christ hung on that cross the implication of everything that happened at Calvary was to the end that we be justified, comma, to the end that we receive the spirit. Because no man knows what is in the heart of the man except that spirit. So the father allowed his spirit who knows what is in his heart to be domiciled in every believer. But the Bible says that the spirit of God is many things. 
he's a counselor, he's an advocate, but there is a mystery that can be engaged that will make the spirit to leave whatever he's doing and start searching the mind of the father and bring to the saints something called the deep things. He said the hidden wisdom and says God prepared it for my glorification. Many people have taught that this mystery is just to blast in tongues. And once you blast in tongues, the Holy Spirit starts searching. How many times have you prayed in tongues in your life? And you have seen that you prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. But we speak this mystery. When we come to those who are matured and we speak the wisdom of God, in a mystery do you know what paul is saying he's saying i am when i come to mature believers i know that i cannot teach them peripheral things i have to teach them the deep things of god but when i come to them i engage this mystery and the spirit of god starts to download deep things and it is those deep things i give them when i come to those who are matured he says we speak this mis this wisdom to them but in a mystery a mystery that only the Holy Ghost can deliver unto men. Listen, I show you a secret tonight that is the secret of death eternally. There's no such thing as being bankrupt. You will find this, you apply this in your life, in your business. You will come up with things that will shock men. Everybody will know that this one, this one cannot be from the earth realm. It's not the wisdom of men, so you can't learn it in school. It's not the wisdom of the princes of this world, so no elder can advise you into it. This one is only available, it was taught in the mind of God himself, and only the spirit can access the mind of Christ. But your own assignment is to find out what the mystery is. The Bible says anytime that mystery is engaged, the Holy Ghost starts to search. There is a spiritual system for accessing deep, hidden revelations. There is a spiritual system for accessing strategies. There are people on earth who have found this secret and their life becomes an unending wonder. It looks like there is a fountain within them. They have learned how to tap into an ability that is higher and greater than their age, their level, their education, their everything. This is what I want to teach you. If you have this, I can tell you happy Easter. If you don't have this, we can rejoice for nothing and eat and go back. And there is no glory in our lives. There is a relationship between the sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows. The sufferings of Christ culminated in his crucifixion. It didn't start in his crucifixion. The sufferings of Christ started right from his passion at Gethsemane. I hope you know that at Gethsemane, that's where Christ became the second Adam. Because two things happened to Adam in the Garden of Eden. First, Adam lost what we call righteousness, right? The nature of God, he lost it. He still had the likeness of God, but he lost the image. The Holy Spirit, he lost. So, if Christ were to be the second Adam, he would have to lose those two things too. Are we together now? Yes. And the only condition for Christ to lose righteousness is to become sin. And he became sin through what we call in theology the doctrine of interpenetration. That's what the communion is. The mystery that two people become one. A Jimmy and his wife now, as far as God is concerned, are one. She has her own body, he has his body, but in the realm of the spirit they are one. Whatever accesses him can access her without permission. If he agrees, she will pay for it. Because they have become one. Are we, are we together now? And the Bible says that when that communion was broken, remember, I think I've taught this many times in this place, that the reason why there were 12 men, you see, do you know why it was only men in, 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 um, in, in the upper room? That's where they had the communion. They were men because men are the carriers of the seeds. And sin is transferred to reproduction. Are we together now? Women don't carry the seeds. Women only receive the seed. 
and give birth to another life. So the men there were standing, 12 of them in number. 12 is the number of government. So they were there. It was the whole world prophetically entering into that covenant where man can now, Christ can now take up the nature of man. That's why he said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have your life. So he broke himself and said, eat. And it gave access for him to carry the whole nature of man. Watch this. Then he went to Gethsemane and he began to cry. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. What cup? The cup was not death. The cup was the Holy Spirit leaving him. Because the moment the Holy Spirit leaves him, he cannot be in touch with heaven again. <laughs> Remember, the connect of the mind. Remember, it is the spirit. When he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani, did the father reply? Because that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. The Holy Spirit was not with Jesus on the cross. If he was with Jesus, the nails would not enter his hands. He had to leave Jesus. That was where the cry was happening. For the first time, the Trinity would be separated. And he said, can this cup, this cup of disunion, can it pass off me? He said, but it has to happen. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That was the reason why when they held him from that time, everything that happened to him was happening to Adam and whoever came from Adam. You see that now? Then, when he was hung on that cross, the Bible tells us that, you know, the nails and everything, and he stood there and listen to what he said. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Jesus now went to hell. I hope you know that Jesus went to hell to fight Satan, not with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. He went as man, Adam, to hell. The Holy Ghost was not there. No, it was not there at all. You see that? If the Holy Ghost was there, Jesus would not be able to go where he's going. Are we together now? And he stood there, defeated Satan, collected the keys. And then on the third day, that same spirit that had left him now came back. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the Bible says, if that same spirit dwells now today, in your mortal body it would do certain things i'm just giving us a little you know just playing with our minds a little let's go back to what we're discussing he said that there is a mystery that activates the holy spirit searching the deep things of god and revealing it to us and it says tied to it is our glorification among the many things listen carefully among the many things that this mystery can bring is to transport the superior wisdom of God and to reveal them to man through the spirit. That part of the blessings of the crucifixion of Christ and the import of redemption is the ability to engage a mystery that causes the Holy Spirit to search the deep things of God and reveals to man. The mystery that controls creativity the mystery that controls innovation. The mystery that controls divine strategy. The mystery that controls supernatural solutions. The mystery that can stir up every dormant gifting and ability in man. The hidden mystery. Let's discuss the technology of activating this mystery. Jesus. Number one, write this down. The first thing I want you to note is that the mind of God is a compendium of infinite wisdom. Write it down. The mind of God. God has a mind. The Bible says that the spirit can search everything in the mind of God, even the deep things. So write it down. That God's mind, God himself, his mind is full of infinite wisdom. Number two. Whatever this mystery is, we know that it is engaged by speaking. Write it down. We are establishing something now. Please just help those under the anointing. 
let's be sensitive I believe that God will be giving a lot of impartations the mystery is engaged by speaking so we know that for the activation of this mystery your mouth has a role to play now listen very carefully number three you see this thing we call speaking in tongues look at me everybody look at me we have missed a lot in it those who taught us speaking in tongues taught us that every time you open your mouth you are doing the same thing speaking in tongues has dimensions and all those dimensions have allocations in the spirit for what they achieve just because it looks like you are doing the same thing so you think every time you are speaking in tongues this mystery is activated by speaking there is the speaking in tongues that is for intercession there is the speaking in tongues that is engaging the mystery that makes the spirit of God to start searching the deep things of God. It's not just that because you open your mouth, you are praying. I'm going to guide you. You will understand what I'm saying shortly. It is the mystery of speaking in an unknown tongue. Listen. But the goal is not intercession, nor supplication. The goal is a system of reception. That speaking in tongues is not only an instrument for intercession. There is a dimension of tongues that you speak to receive. You receive things in the spirit by engaging that mystery. Not just interceding for sinners. Not just praying. There is a dimension of the hidden wisdom of God that every time you begin to utter tongues with that revelation and with that consciousness. The Holy Spirit does not just come as an intercessor. It's a message you are sending to the Spirit that I am in need of a mystery. And the Holy Spirit says, I get the message you are saying. There is a way you can pray that he knows I'm interceding for a sinner. He joins you. There is a way you can pray, but that there is a tongue you can utter from the earth. That is a message to the Holy Ghost. I am stranded. I need something for my glory. And he goes and starts to search. Most of us think every time we pray in tongues, because it sounds the same, you think you are saying the same thing. those who have taught praying in tongues have only taught it with respect to accessing spiritual power like okay power if you want power just pray in tongues or if you want to feel like you're a prayer warrior there are all kinds of dimensions the same electricity powers a keyboard the same electricity powers fan the same electricity but there is a way you can channel it there is a dimension of tongues that is not for intercession it is a dimension the moment you utter it the spirit of god goes to the mind of the father that the end of that tongues is a revelation of something you did not know before you started praying that tongues cannot stop with you say amen and you go back no way no way mm -mm. you don't just pray and finish the one you are praying when you pray just say thank you jesus lord i give you all the glory because you were interceding and you were building up your spirit man but that when you engage these tongues something must leave God and manifest physically you can hold it and say this is the answer I give you thanks then the secret was revealed to Daniel a king came and said tell me my dream and the interpretation otherwise I would destroy you Daniel showed us I don't know what Daniel did in the night. He said, King, there is no man that can know this thing. Oh. He said, but wait, before you kill us, give me time. In the night when others will help that lady, please. In the night when I don't know what Daniel did, but all I know is that Daniel tapped into a frequency in the spirit and Daniel received this. Let me tell you this. Listen very carefully. I know this because there was a prayer Daniel was praying that made Gabriel to come to earth, not to fight, but to bring a message. It's in your Bible. He was praying a prayer. Many people say that, no, it was not, a, it was not just a prayer of warfare. It, Gabriel said, I am sent. Something about your prayer called heaven. I am come with the answer, understanding. And the Bible says this mystery God ordained it for our glory.
Daniel was an ordinary man. These saints in the Bible were ordinary people. It is these mysteries that turn them to become like gods upon the earth. What kind of men are these? They want to kill somebody and a human being with flesh and blood says, give me time. He goes to the secret place and says, king, I have your answer. And the king looked at him. The dreamer forgot his dream. The dreamer forgot his dream. And someone went to bed and all of a sudden came back. This one is not word of knowledge. Oh. This is a download of a strategy. Word of knowledge gives you in part. This one comes to give you an information. Imagine what that would do to your life. Imagine that you can tap. Let me tell you, listen. Without this strategy, you will never move forward in life. You will get to points where you will stay grounded. Nothing on earth has the capacity to move you. And the spirit of God just stands. Oh, I'm born again. Ba, 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 ba. You can pray for three hours and intercede for everybody. And the Holy Ghost will say, if you know. This is what Apostle Paul. That guy was a dangerous guy. That Paul, you see. Paul came and saw the believers and knew what was wrong. He knew what was wrong with their spiritual life. You guys are zealous. You guys pray all the time. But there's something you don't have. Let me teach you. Remember, they were filled with the Holy Ghost already. What he did in chapter 12, 14 was to explain to them. But Paul saw that they were not maximizing certain things. He said, let me teach you. You see all these mysteries I share. Let me show you how they come. This Paul teaching now. Paul says, I am ordinary. Some of the apostles knew Jesus before me. But I was taught this mystery. And every time I engage it, it was while Paul was doing this that the Holy Ghost brought him a mystery. He said, church, let me arrange the gifts of the Spirit now in a way that will profit the body. That's not normal. You don't do that by education. Let me tell you, there are things God has brought to me by this truth. You see, Ba, when the truth of Scripture comes to you from heaven, you may not be able to share everything, but there are truths. Some of this system of operating in the anointing, this is how they came. A visitation. Son, this is how this thing works. If you understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, the next time you go to pray, many of you will have, some of you have done it unconsciously. That's why you see people come to testify. I went to bed and I had a visitation. No, nobody just comes. They are called. They may use the face of a man. They may, so God had mercy on you. You just knew you were praying. Something about your prayer called heaven. Listen, read your Bible and see men who called heaven. Some did not get an answer. Some got an answer. The Bible calls it a mystery. How could God leave men on earth without an assistance? Do you think God knows? God does not know that you need to prosper. Do you think God does not know? Imagine the sicknesses in this world. Do you not know that even the anointing, most of us are stranded. We don't even know how to use it effectively. It is the Holy Ghost that comes. Look at Jesus. Jesus saw a man and knew that the only thing that will heal this man is to spit on the ground. He never repeated it again. A mystery that came. Look at how Joshua, it was divine strategies that gave people victory in the Bible. None of those strategies were repeated again. They happened just once. They, they, how can a man look and say, I will go over a, a Jericho seven times? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and can look at that gentleman who gave a testimony. He had it's a, it's a true testimony. I got I got it too. He broke his I, I, I don't know whether he broke his teeth or I think they were supposed to remove four of his teeth or something, an accident, and then something else happened to him. And the gentle, I don't know what he did though. But the gentleman said he went to bed and all of a sudden a revelation comes and he gets up and he's gone. 
nothing just happens like that. It's not true. There is a dimension of God's glory that will never manifest in our lives. For as long as all you think will bring you glory and greatness in life is just certificate or wisdom from age or just searching Google, how to be rich, enter. How to do business, enter. How to be a good wife, enter. For as long as that's what you are doing, that's Sophia, the wisdom of men. There is a superior dimension. Most of us know it, but you think it just comes just by looking at the Bible alone. No. There is a dimension where you can call for the assistance of heaven. There are certain things, let me tell you, God taught me about the anointing. He taught me not by saying, he taught me by imparting that knowledge. I can't teach it because it was not through words. It's, it's a lecture, but it came like a software. See, what makes men unusual is the mysteries that upgrade their lives, not their skin, not their body. When you see an ordinary person and you see a dimension of result that is not human, go back and ask either a witch or a wizard appear to that person or something must have happened in the realm of the spirit. Hmm. Are we together? That you can go back and look at your family and they can say what is special about the Easter and he said, Lord, there has to be an answer to what is happening in this family. Are you not seeing the way our families are? How many of you have seen that the solution cannot come from it? The deep things of God. There are pastors stranded in ministry. Look at the foolish instructions people do to rise in life. It does not sound human. But because it came from the mind of God. It produces strange results. Go around the city seven times. Because it came to a man. He went round and the city collapsed. Are we blessed? I'm sharing with you a reality. That I've worked in myself. Stupid things. But came. I know how to call for help from heaven. If you don't know in this wicked world. The devil will eat you up and spit out your bones. It's not every tongue that is just for building up your spirit. There is a dimension of praying in tongues that is a cry of mercy in the realm of the spirit. I need assistance. Oh God, I am stranded. Except you help from heaven, I cannot do anything. And all of a sudden, an emissary is sent from the realm of the spirit and comes to deliver as desire. Paul said, the hidden wisdom that God ordained for our glory. Are you getting blessed? Now let's continue. Let me show you something. Go to verse 10. Verse 10. Please sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Sit down. It says, but God has revealed them to us. Listen carefully. It says, by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. That's why we stop, right? Now, Paul is trying to explain to them that the Holy Spirit is the searcher of these things. But now he's telling us that there is a limitation to this thing. And here's the limitation. Go ahead. He says, okay, if we've, we've read, go to verse 12. Verse 12. Now we have received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us. 13. Which things we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual 14 but the natural man now watch this this is the limitation to this experience once you are natural excuse me once you are natural it says but the natural man cannot receive these things why it says for they are the nature of that mystery is such that you must be a child to be able to receive it it's too childish for natural people to access it. What is it in a dance and breakthrough? What is it in an instruction and miracle alert? These are manifestations of the hidden wisdom of God. 
for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Two more verses. 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he is judge of no man. 16. For who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? The word instruct him there is not just to direct him. Who had known? Let's, let's see what Amplify says. Amplify puts it beautifully there. Give us Amplify. For who has known or understood the mind, the counsel and the purposes of the Lord so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge. He said, but we have the mind of Christ and do hold the thoughts, the feelings and the purposes of his heart. It's a question he was asking who there. He says, who, which ordinary man knows the mind of Christ that he can even instruct him? He said, we do not qualify to know the mind of Christ, but by that spirit, he says, we have the mind of Christ. We have accessed something that men cannot have. The ability to hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of his heart. Men rise in this kingdom through the mysteries that they know. Men rise in this kingdom. Your life and my life is not just going to rise just because of our education as good as it is. Your life is not going to rise just by the informations. There are things in your life, the answer is not in any book on earth. There are things, there are solutions in your life that need to come that there is no other way of accessing it. I show you a system that was created in the kingdom for our glorification. Someone met me one time, a gentleman, and he said he works in the bank. And he said they gave them an assignment to bring a particular target. Me too, when I had that amount, I said, Habba, where is this guy a thief? Where is he going to go and raise that kind of money within one month or whatever? Let me tell you, there are things in your life, you stand and look at this mountain. You do everything you know to do, it will not move. At that level, you stop trying. You allow the spirit of God. Remember, I told you the mind of God is a compendium of infinite wisdom. I dare to tell you there is an answer to every question. It just depends on who tells you the answer. There is an answer. The Bible is full of men, women, people who... They, do you know, do you know, I believe with all my heart that it was part of this hidden wisdom that guided Solomon to give a thousand bond offering. Yes, he loved the Lord. But that kind of thing cannot be normal. It's not just normal. It's not just, a, will you carry a thousand bond? No. Solomon, there is a formula to get what you are looking for. And he directed him. And he did something that was foolish. And God came. He said, you called me. He didn't say you slaughtered animal. You called me. I'm here. Solomon, what should I do for you? And Solomon said, so this thing works. Ah. Look at the kinds of instructions that would come. You guys are not going to win. No. Why? You are not circumcised. Ah, what is the relationship between my being circumcised and holding a knife? I am a warrior. The angel said, you can go and fight and die like a chicken. I've told you, the force that controls this result is your circumcision, not your sword. So if you want to win, circumcise everybody. Imagine the enemies watching men sit down for seven days they can't walk they can't move he said what's wrong with these people warriors he said a, a ghost came and said we can't win your knife is sharp but you are not circumcised and he said you cannot win david went and carried five stones does that make sense to you carried five stones to kill a giant when he came and stood before goliath Goliath said, Abba, David, me? Re I know I will kill you, but at least respect me. Am I a dog? Is he a dog that you are chasing? He didn't know that that thing was a mystery. There's nowhere where stone was carried to kill anybody except the one that the angels use hailstone to kill people. A mystery was revealed to that young boy. And he stood before Goliath with his foolishness and arrogance and took his head down, used his knife, cut it and gave it to the birds. 
that one experience brought him a wife he became tax free are we together his family was exempted from what and he was given great wealth and honor say the deep things of God say it again the deep things of God let me tell you this you know why I'm teaching you this because there are many people who believe just because you prophesy and say in the name of Jesus enter a new dimension everything will change about their lives most men of God will want you to believe that just because they prophesy everything will change there are answers that must come to you from heaven by yourself that you go to bed in the night and wake up with something that works for only you nobody who applies what was revealed to you that it will work for it was sent from heaven for you are you getting what I'm saying now I don't mean to be disrespectful but you can get up and see just because you don't see koinonia posters around you now go and then don't produce poster too for you is copy and you find out that no people say i don't know what you are doing you didn't inform me i said ah, but how are they doing it here they are not just doing it here it was received that's why it's working and you mean you were there when i told you god gave me the solution for the spreading of koinonia messages is there i came and told him i said god has given me the answer no selling videos no packaging anything put it online and the lord said he will give it wings that was the instruction the hidden wisdom for our glory look the blessing that the Lord has brought today because of the ability to access the deep things of God brothers and sisters imagine other things that can happen to your life imagine how the God can end that mockery in your family overnight by one encounter with the wisdom of God do a B C and you stand up foolishly and do it and that's the end of it Do you believe what I'm telling you? Listen, there are, there are families that are suffering that even welfare can't help them. No matter how you give to them, the, the level of trouble in that family is such that even one destiny helper cannot be able to help them. Because the need is recurrent. It's not one time. If they eat today, there's no hope. 11 people, nobody is educated. Nobody went to school. Nobody can do any business. They are all old. Brother, you need something that is not in this earth. This is a message of hope. This is a message of hope. Young men, listen to me. If you don't access this, you will never be established in your life. I promise you. 50,000 per month will not establish you for life. I give you a guarantee. Go and put your money in the bank and get 5% per annum. And let me see how much in 10 years, that's 50%. And see how much that will help to build your life most successful people will never tell you everybody knows what he did in the secret you are just seeing the result a man gets up from nowhere and builds an estate they call it favor but they won't tell you the dynamics your favor is real i testify your favor is real your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Let me tell you this. In one of the days of the seven days prayer and fasting, I went to the Lord and I prayed a simple prayer. And I went to bed. Now, these, these, these are occurrences that happen to me all the time. I, was, I woke up in the night and usually I go to bed there was no light and I woke up and found out someone had on my lamp my lamp physically now these are experiences that happen to me all the time opened my lamp and then I saw no not this book another one opened and a biro there I, I know because I knew the moment I see this I know God wants to speak to me and I just said Lord I'm ready to write 
and one, two, three, four. God just brought something to my life. I said, that's it. God, whatever it is you have done for me, I rejoice forever. I cried for over one hour, seven days prayer and fasting. I said, my God, my God. Brothers and sisters, if your eyes is not open from heaven, you will not see. If your ears are not open from heaven, you cannot hear. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. You hear me tell you this. A man can, you hear me just prophesy and say in the name of Jesus, it's not just what I'm speaking. There is something I receive that is released through what I'm saying that creates the effect. When I say the power, it's not just because I'm anointed. Everybody operates by the secrets that are working in their life. I share this thing with you because I want God to surprise you. That you can see this. A family that have no business buying a car. They don't know nothing about finances. They can access something. And in two weeks, all of them are on their knees. Saying, God, what is this? Where did this one come from? Listen, the Bible says it was meant for our glorification. Not our shame. God does not lift men to bring shame to their lives. We don't know his system. It's a mystery that Paul used. Think how many times they tried to kill Paul. Think how many times they tried to do whatever they would do with Paul. There is no such thing as hopelessness for any man. Once you are alive, you are only hopeless until the mystery leaves heaven and gets to you. That's why the prince of Persia fought the information, not the angel. No, don't get this to Daniel. If Daniel receives this, something will happen. Let me tell you, that fight was not Old Testament fight. That fight is a fight that happens every time something is leaving heaven and coming to you. Satan will. He knows that one thing that will. He sent a word to Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. He sent a word to one lady and it changed the story of our generation. That nobody in your family rises to a level and all of a sudden something enters you and you just turn. And let me tell you, I can know what has entered you by the results that follow. These things, eh? Take your eyes away from physical things. When God gave me this, physical things are remote controlled. Forget all these things you desire. It's not by chasing them. There is a central control button in life, I guarantee you, that brings you these things. One of it is this physical results. You have seen it happen in this ministry. You have seen it again and again. No man can do these things except God be with him. I'm saying this to you because the reality of the death of Christ is useless until your life brings glory to your family. We keep mocking ourselves as Christians, going everywhere. Jesus died for me. I am born again. There is nothing that symbolizes glory, not in our lives, not in the life of anybody. Every unsaved person is still unsaved. There is something you and God can do that will make the hardened sinner in your family within two weeks you will come one night and hear him listening to a message from your phone you say sorry sir this is a christian message you say you don't know what happened to me you just leave me quietly you just know that god has come to your family something you did called for his help and he came hallelujah you hear that lady one point hand is touched changes to four points you try it and see if it will change it's not the hand, it's the mystery. It's not the hand. So most people just think, oh, I will just confess just because the Bible says to speak. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, oh, receive this. And you find out nothing happens. Because you see, it is what supports what you are saying, not just the speech itself. You may not know but your results begin to show. First, you would think it's a coincidence. So you are not sure. You are even afraid of the result. But then you see that it becomes predictable. Predictable. Uh -uh. 
someone blessed Sam today. In the evening, someone blessed him. Next tomorrow, someone blessed him. Next tomorrow, someone blessed him. And you find out that no, this, this is not so. Your little church, one member comes. Then the next thing, five people come. You see somebody who say, I'm a keyboardist. My friend is a drummer. The Lord just led us to your church. Say, no, but this can't be a coincidence. I've been in ministry for 10 years. No, there is no coincidence. Everything is intentionally calculated. Even the disappearance of favor from your family was intentionally programmed. It will take something from the spirit. Listen, there are some of us here, you graduated with a third class. Let's tell ourselves the truth. If it is in this Nigeria, there is no human being who is going to employ you ordinarily. I'm not making you scared. There are some of us who what we have studied with all humility, what we have studied, that value is not celebrated nor needed in Nigeria. It's the truth. There are some of us, because of the tribes we come from, there are wicked men that sit in positions in this country and make sure they frustrate you. There are some of us, even if you collect salary, the 10 other people in your family who need you to eat will make that salary look like 10 naira. You need to access these mysteries. Are we together? You need to access these mysteries. I will show you how. Kai, oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Time will tell whether we are just talkatives or dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom. Time will tell whether what you are receiving is a cunningly devised fable or is a programming that will make you surprised at your own life. That somebody will look at you and say, I know you are a villager. You say, you, you insulted me for 30 years, but I found something that in six months brought glory to my life. That you will bring the gospel to your family. You bring the, not just the gospel. You are able, you may be the last born. But this thing does not do with age. Whoever can get the Holy Spirit to bring you something from the mind of God. It will change your life. Understand this. You see all these manifestations that happen? It's not just the anointing. You see, let me tell you something with... When you catch a spiritual mystery, there is an effect of that understanding on your environment. You see that? So every time people come under that circumference, they're, even without directly receiving it, they become benefactors of that experience. It's true. If you have a vision and you see an angel now, anyone within that vicinity will benefit there are others that opening of that portal insight will come to them they were not praying just because you open the portal someone will benefit from it the prophet opened the eyes of another person he never said do you have faith do you believe because he could see someone's eyes open But the natural man, the man who is scientific, the man who laughs at anything that is of God, the man who looks at all these things and says, look, let me tell you, I, I went to Harvard Business School. I'm a smart man. I know everything about economy. I, I went to so, so, so business school. Nothing is wrong with that. I did this and that. Look, I'm a smart gentleman. I got this and that. The Bible says those kinds of people. To them, when you are talking like this, they are some of these bloggers that write nonsense and extract messages like this and say, look at the rubbish that they are teaching members. And another natural man will concur and say, yes, so they teach people to dance in church. They teach people to jump like fools. Ah, religion, the opium of the masses. I don't know who taught that, but what I am telling you is the mystery that men have accessed and produced wonders with. You see, if this ministry was not successful, many of you think you are just talking just because of this. Is, let me tell you something with results. Results strengthen your message. Are you hearing this now? That's why for many of you, no one has received your gospel. Results defy argument. You can argue with a man, but you can't argue with results. 
a woman can be barren but when that woman is pregnant it's not water that is in her stomach it's a human being this earth you see is like a computer game whoever has the control button will make nonsense of satan in this earth there are things i have learned that have surprised me how satan hid this thing from the church and those who access these things are those who do witchcraft and scientology and all of this so the condition is they initiate you into those devilish things they say come they put incisions they do all kinds of occult groups and then they show you something that has always been there always been there you sell your soul to the devil for money you sell your soul but and, it, and you know we preachers insult people why sell your soul but hunger was it no hunger that took israel to egypt if they were satisfied they would not go there was hunger and they all went hunger is still taking men to egypt we must be able to find a system to make goshen fruitful so that they don't need to go to egypt don't sit down and tell people uh, why why are you doing this why will you go and sleep with a man to get uh, a job can you do you know the mystery that can give the sister the job come let me pray for you except i'm a man of god you will get a job in two weeks five years she has not gotten the job and she just says don't mind this guy my family is dying there and this arrogant pastor wants to leave me in pain but happy are you brothers and sisters that you can look at a man and enter a family and they said look look at us sorry we're embarrassed there is nothing to eat our father is about leaving jesus christ and saying that by next week he's going to go to a herbalist in the village and you say daddy give me 24 hours something will happen in this house give me 24 hours and the man says you are a young boy we did all this jesus thing those days in boys brigade he said no problem i agree with you sir just allow me and within 24 hours something happens and the man calls you and says sorry i don't understand I'm, I'm a proud man i usually don't talk to small boys but sit down and you tell him jesus is still the way jesus is still the la truth jesus is still the life how about that my herbalist leave him i brought you the reality he said he gave it for our glory listen hear me church if we trivialize the desperation of men to see the glory of god in their life we will lose our members to occultists did you hear what i said any pastor any prophet any apostle any man of god that trivializes the importance of the members experiencing the glory of god i guarantee you a day will come our young men our keyboardists will go to shrines because they must eat they must become they will become herbalists our ladies will go and fraternize with the gates of hell we will be there jumping on stage dispensing all kinds of things there are things that pertain to life and godliness not just godliness to life your child must go to school to life your child can be born again and not be educated and as a result your child will become a slave to every other person there are some of us everyone in your family works for someone they distribute them to go and be slaves you are 10 in your family nobody can stand alone you go and help this uncle wash his car you Papa. your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your kindness is real I testify. Hallelujah. Look at someone like Kenny. Look at this gentleman. I, I don't mean to make him feel bad. His dad has gone to be with the Lord. His mother has gone to be with the Lord. Everybody that can help him in life has gone. He's on his own. It's easy for a preacher who has food in his house to run your mouth and say you will make it and leave this gentleman by the time he suffers his sister is crying everybody is crying this guy will get into gambling he will get into occultism he will get into every kind of demonic thing 
that's what we are, we are losing our members in church because they are not seeing the reality the validity of what the word says we are losing our ladies to ungodly people we are losing our gentlemen our fathers are becoming herbalists covenanting generations in shrines because hunger is taking them to Egypt I will never preach a God who is not alive it's a vow I made right from when God called me I will preach a God that can be proven here and now that he is not only the saver of souls he's the lifter of men he's the anointer of men he's the revealer of secrets I love you too much some of you as you are hearing me now you check your phone and you see missed calls from your loved ones we have not eaten for three days please if you're a man of God here let's take people seriously let's not just be acting games with people's destinies I bring you good news there is a way out there is a way out there is a way out we have orphans in this place we have widows in this place we have widowers in this place it's not their fault that they could not be educated do you blame a child was it his fault you see a woman of 60 years with her two children there is no physical hope of any breakthrough they are the ones who give us offerings and we collect as men of God. They are the ones who carry their last money and kneel down and give us. Our job is to collect and eat. Let me tell you, God will soon start punishing us men of God who are collecting people's offering and not giving them the truth that will lift them. After service, I can stand here and some of you will carry your last money and come and give me and I will collect and go back. Woe betide me if I don't teach you the truth. It's not fair we keep destroying people's destinies in the name of church look at how many young men sit down and they are asking man of god you are established me i'm not show me now so that both the sower and the reaper will rejoice but i keep telling you you just keep sowing in my life and sit down there while i am enjoying it as i'm talking to you now my food is ready some of you you love god but right where you are there is no food for you to eat how long will this continue we say it's Easter. Jesus died. He conquered Satan. Oh, dead. Where is your sting? We mock ourselves in church. And the only people who rejoice are the men of God. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Listen. Gentlemen, let me teach you something. There are things you can learn. You will bring one song. One song, not ten songs. Nobody rises as a result of a full album. There is one song that comes from, there is the one you compose that your worship teammates will clap for you. And with it, they will invite you to two or three ministrations and you go back as usual. But there is one that comes from the throne. You will sit down and hear them playing it in Africa. And you will mint money as if you are a charmer. And God says, that's not the issue. I'm just proving to you that everything from above is above all. There are some of you, there's one idea that this mystery can bring. You go and meet someone and say, sir, this is it. And the person says, because of this, come. I will. Read the Bible. Look at modern history and see people's lives change. When you hear some of the songs that he'll song right, look at the young guys. They are not even neatly dressed. You know that this one is the grace of God upon a vessel. You ask them to compose songs by themselves and see the rubbish they will write. There are music artists in this nation. We all know where they got their songs from. It does not make sense and it has blessed them. That's to tell you there is a force that is not human. You listen to it, you can't stop. Something in it draws you. Most of us write songs, you carry a paper and a Bible and sit down with the consciousness of the hunger that is in front of you and you just find a scripture. Where will I lift up my eyes? Two times. I will say amen. I will say amen. The Lord be praised two times. It will never, never sell. Not in this kingdom. If, if listen you are laughing I'm very serious with what I'm saying if it is God's result it must come from him there are pastors that love God 
doing everything they were taught in Bible school, but it's not working. Because the forces that keep men down, the forces that keep men down can only be dislodged by an intelligence that is not earthly. As for me, Joshua Selman, I have made my choice that this is how I'm going to live my life. My life is too risky to be human. This, the earth is too wicked for me to live just as a human being. I must live as a divine being because it is he that cometh from above that is above all. Are we together? We have doctors here. If you follow the normal course, the thing they are doing in Shika, you will never really rise. Because one day you will see somebody who will look at you and say, Dr. David, I know you are qualified, Dr. Halima, but because you are not from my village, I sit on your destiny. I am professor this and that. And he says, all right, sir. You go back and engage this mystery and come out. And in his presence, he will sign you as you are rising. Tomorrow, he will come in the dedication of a foundation and he just say, ah, that is a, is my own. I wanted to tell you that I didn't stop rising. After all of your mockery, my God is still alive. Listen, don't you dare laugh at any man that understands what I'm saying. They may carry their 200 naira trouser and surprise you. I bring you a message of hope, brothers and sisters. This storm that raged over our families will not rage forever. There is a way out. This Easter, there is a way out. There is a way out. The way out is to be able to access this hidden mystery. Now sit down. Let me explain to you the last thing and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Pray. I'm already seeing an electric cable sparking. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Hallelujah. The overflow by the roadside. There's someone receiving a healing anointing. That overflow, overflow two now. There's someone receiving a healing anointing. The healing anointing is what I'm seeing. The healing anointing. It will be by the Spirit. You may not be a preacher, but you are receiving it. And it will change your life. Oh, what business can lift me? Let me try this. Let me try that. And you keep crying. You access this mystery and you are sitting down and here it comes. And your life rises and changes. I know a woman years ago. She, she got into Coca-Cola business. And the only reason why she got into Coca-Cola business was because she was just sitting down according to what she told me. And it was like a vision. And she saw a, like a, what they call this thing? This thing they buy, container. And she was bringing Coca-Cola from it. Immediately, she knew that this was where my prosperity was. You see why many of us keep trying things and wasting our time? You are trying. You need to receive. God knows where your money is. Your money is not everywhere. It is in the place directed. Geography matters when it comes to do prosperity. Isaac sold in that land. And the woman started it mysteriously. Help started coming for her. And that was how this woman rose up. Do you know, when I spoke with this woman, from what I know about financial intelligence, I, I saw how unfair life can be for such a woman to be prospering. I think the only thing that woman may know is just how to count money and all of that. But just because she was directed, the Lord is my shepherd. And so I shall not want. Hallelujah. The character of this kind of prayer, listen carefully. Let me tell you the difference between praying in tongues, the prayer language for your spiritual building, your edification, and the prayer that is for reception. Number one, when you pray this kind of prayer, listen, the kind of prayer that receives it's not a prayer that is done with aggression. Your mind has to be alert. Listen carefully. I'm giving you 
there are certain kinds of prayer that the power of God comes upon you. You are praying in tongues. You must exert energy because of the gravity of what is happening in the spirit. These tongues, these tongues you see, is the kind of tongues that as you are communicating, God allows your mind to still be alert because something is happening. As you are activating certain things, ideas are coming. It's not just the kind of tongues that you go to the forest alone and you are shouting. This one, you are praying, you are receiving. Something is coming from heaven for you to receive. Your mind must be alert as you pray. Your mind must be alert as you pray. It's not every kind of prayer that your mind is alert. There are times you are just praying. Sometimes you are not even yourself. Five hours will pass, you don't know. Because there is a dimension. But when you are praying to activate this mystery, your mind must be alert to receive that which God is bringing. Number two, listen. Everything received must be documented or preserved immediately because of the nature of how spiritual things are. Listen carefully. Spiritual things are very volatile. You can lose a spiritual information in five minutes and it will take the grace of God to receive. Sometimes it can be a vision. That vision, you can't understand it immediately. So you find a way of preserving it. My phone is full of voices of encounters. Sometimes I'm praying and the things I'm seeing, I start recording it immediately because I know if this thing sleeps, it may not come back again. I, is somebody getting this now? Most of you, when these kinds of things happen, you say, no problem. Let me finish my three hours prayer and it leaves. Never comes again. That was a five years breakthrough that just disappeared in one strategy. You see why prophets were writers. When I'm praying, I pray with my books, my virus on my hand, my phone, everything. Because there are times I will need to draw. There are times I will need to quickly write. There are times I will need to record. I get up in the morning. I, I found out that sometimes writing is too slow. How many of you have gotten up and you literally had seconds to preserve something? Seconds. If it escapes that second. Sometimes when God is merciful to you, he will draw you to start praying. You think you are just praying. You are repeating the same thing. And there the dream comes again. Are we together? Let me tell you something. I have gotten information in pieces that the complete picture came within the span of three years. Spiritual things are very strange. You can get one part. You need to preserve it because you will need that part. The other part will come December the next year. And then the last piece comes January. When you piece three of them together, they equate a dimension of breakthrough that your life will never recover from. So when you are praying these kinds of prayer, you can go to the place of prayer knowing that my purpose of prayer is to receive a strategy. I'm going there. Lord, I'm going to receive. And all of a sudden you are praying. You are praying. You are alert. You are alert. There are some times in the midst of your prayer, you will find out that the grace to pray supposedly lifts. You can't pray again. Don't just get up and say it's a demonic attack. Be silent. His voice is coming. Something is coming. Most of us don't understand these dynamics of prayer. There are times you are praying and you just feel like sitting down somewhere. Help them please. And you just sit down somewhere quietly. Like a zombie. You are even afraid because you don't want people to think that you came and you were joking. You see the mistake we make. When we get to the place of prayer, we just shut the door and make sure everybody around is hearing us to justify our spirituality. We are cheating ourselves of dimensions. There are times you can go to prayer and for two hours nobody has heard you. You've not even started the prayer. You are sitting down and for two hours you are like a librarian dictating mysteries that you yourself don't understand. One day God will say, remember what I told you. Go to your book, page 75. Check the last column. That's the answer for what you are looking for. There are times that I've gone to make reference to books. Things I wrote 2008, 2009. I just remember, I've seen this image somewhere. And God says, remember, I go and look for the book. I remember when Koinonia was going to start. That's when I remembered that God had revealed that thing to me, 2005. 
I now when I was searching the book, immediately I opened, I saw everything revealed verbatim. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? We are going to pray. Many of us lose it. Listen to me. Every time you stand before a challenge and you want to pray, don't just go and wail. Oh God, you too, you know how we are. If you don't arise, you can cry, you can do everything you want to do. But the moment you pray, do you know many times you will see your prayer alternating? You know that the last 30 minutes was warfare. The next 30 minutes is not warfare. That, that prayer, they all have their characteristics. You can know that I was praying for two hours, but the last 20 minutes of that prayer is this one is, is a serious warfare. What is happening? You thought that after two hours it will go and all of a sudden a grace for prayer comes again and you can push through another two hours. There are times you go to pray, you cannot even reach 20 minutes. If you are not careful, you will think you are backsliding. It is the context of the communication of the spirit. Religion is a dangerous thing. It will destroy your prayer life. There are times I've sat down to pray from morning till evening. And I'm unable to say a word. Highest worship is just praying. I want to get up and maybe the only thing I can say in that prayer session is thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. I give you all the praise. Thank you Jesus. Here it comes. I'm writing. Thank you Jesus. Okay. Teach these people this. Thank you Jesus. Your people don't understand this. Thank you Jesus. The way to go about this is to do A, B, C, D. Thank you Jesus. Okay, don't worry. I will reveal to you the answer during leaders meeting. Thank you, Jesus. They that are led by the Spirit of God. You see, when you understand what I'm teaching you, you will not only command signs and wonders, your life will be a sign and a wonder. We win in life by strategies. If Naomi never went to the farm of Boaz, she would never marry. Marriageable but no strategy. If the walls of Jericho, the people carried their sword and tried to bring down that gate, they would have slaughtered them like chickens. Just the arrows from the watchmen would kill them and destroy them. It takes strategies to win. You have dreams. Where is the strategy? When I meet pastors, they tell me their message, but they don't tell me the strategy. God said, go and raise me a people. Where do you think these people are? And how are you going to fulfill that mandate? A friend called me and he said, um, I should advise him, is it right? Wonderful friend that I love. He said, is it right for him to continue raising offering in church? I said, well, I don't have a problem with it, but go and find out how God designed the finances of your ministry to run. Go and pray and receive a strategy. Do you know the challenge with the body of Christ? We copy everything without thinking about it. We copy. If I start rolling this, um, um, what do you call it? My trousers now here. I do it for two weeks. As foolish as it is. Of course, I know it's because you love me and you believe in the word of the Lord upon me. You will be surprised how somebody will go for lecture with trousers rolled like that. He will never ask and say, sorry, is it an instruction that is followable or is a unique dealing or you, you are, your leg is just paining you and you think you are doing this? We copy everything and sometimes to our detriment. Are we blessed? I want you to get results. You have to be at a lot. You have to be focused. You have to be discerning. One of the ways that we engage these kinds of tongues is to write down all the issues of concern and pray while you look at it. There is a relationship between your eyes and the realm of the spirit. This eye is not just for looking. You can write these things. House rent. God, what is the way out? Are we together now? Ministry is not growing. I'm trusting you for the healing anointing. I've read everything I know. What is the way out? You are walking around and you just allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you. All of a sudden, you will just get an idea. Go down to Zaria. See Apostle, let him lay hands on you. 
you see you think that that thing just came there is no other man of god you will meet no matter how anointed that will impart that healing anointing because the instruction is already tied to a vessel sometimes it may not even be to see a man of god there are graces when i wanted god led me to specific people and places i remember i've shared some of them with you we just do things at random no divine direction hallelujah i will never forget one day i was asking god a very serious question about ministry and all of a sudden literally as if as if a force came my hands were shaking and before you knew it i still don't know the name that i typed a youtube video enter and all of a sudden one old old gray baba just appears like this with one 25 minutes message and i listened to it that message changed my life i searched for other videos the, the message did not even finish but it contained my answer hallelujah are you blessed you have to learn this if you must rise there are two ways to rise in life hustle if you want to keep moving around and knocking or go to God and say my God show me the way show me the way God can help men oh. koinonia hear me my God can help men this trial and error we are doing with our lives is too much. Sometimes the injury that will come from trying may not allow you to try another day again. So the key is to be circumspect. Access the deep things of God. If you're naming tonight's message that is, is titled Accessing the Deep Things of God. I'm giving you a secret. This is what I do with my life. Lord, I thank you. Sometimes a scripture is coming. Sometimes the voice of God comes for you. Sometimes a mystery comes. Sometimes an instruction comes. You see that? God can give you all kinds of foolish instructions, let me tell you. Do you know there was a day? I do this every once in a while, but there was a day God instructed me. I was just lying down. I, I wasn't asleep and I was praying. And all of a sudden, I just sensed the anointing. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God told me, stand up and lie down flat on the ground. Like, get up from your bed oh, and lie. Imagine if somebody opened my door. He said, this is it. I've, I've, I've always known that this guy, there is something occultic he's doing. And you would think as I lie down, I will feel one ghost. I saw nothing. I had nothing. I lay down like that for about maybe 20 minutes. Honestly speaking, I even started sleeping small. And later the voice just came, go to bed, go and sleep. The next meeting that we went, I can't remember where, I saw a dimension of the grace of God that I couldn't understand. I said, what happened? And God told me, while you were lying down, your, something was happening to you. You don't have to feel it, you believe it. God is not a fool. This is how some of you can be there. Lord, who is going to be my helper? And God says, come out in front of your house and just stand for 15 minutes. The natural man. Lord, what? I'm, I'm educated. And you stand there. 10 minutes. Somebody passes and says, ah, promise, are you all right? I say, ah, I'm fine. Of course, you can't tell them it's God that's making you a fool like that. And all of a sudden, sometimes the 15 minutes will even finish and nothing will happen. And you just feel disappointed and you go back and say, God, this is what you did. God is watching your aptness to obeying him. One day, you will be sleeping in the night. And by 2 a.m., God will say, call Pastor Alpha. Just call and tell him what is the message. Ah, God, how do I call a married man by 2 a.m.? God will say, do it. Immediately you call, he say, I was just about to call you. Here is the message for you. The place is Uyo, not Lagos. That's all I saw in my dream. Look, believers, you need to be dynamic. When you are just straightforward and religious, there is no breakthrough. The operations of the spirit is like the wind. You can't tell where it's coming or where it's going. So is one who is led of the spirit. There are people here who came from Lagos because they were praying, Lord, what do I do with my life? And God says, stand up, come to Zaria. 
they can't tell you exactly why they are here. That's why when you ask them those questions, it's difficult for them to answer. They don't want to look like they are stupid. Sometimes they themselves think they are stupid, but keep watching God. There is a mystery walking out. Then you will see the glory and the beauty. Why will God tell you to leave Lagos? This gentleman left Ghana and came. Help that lady. I said Lagos and truly, truly, she fell under the anointing. Praise God. Someone gets up and is enjoying oil money in Port Harcourt. And God says, stand up and go and do two weeks in Zamfara. Another person can be living where there is an oil well and be dying. Whereas his money is in Sokoto. As dry and harsh as the weather is. Your prosperity is where the voice of God is for you. Not Greener pastures is not a location. Greener pastures is a realm where the voice of the spirit directs you. There are people, any other place you go, you will not prosper. You will prosper in Zaria. Someone will come in Zaria and be wondering, what is in this place? The only thing I saw was just a few shops here, but a direction for you. Every lifting in this ministry and every greatness God has brought happen right here because we could access these mysteries. Are you ready to pray? We are going to pray. Sit down. You are not going to stand up. Sit down. Listen. You are just going to play these instruments for me just lightly. And then I just want you to pray. Don't shout and do that. Just take out time. You just pray in the spirit. Right? Take out time and pray in the spirit. And you will be surprised to be sensitive. <laughs> To what God will be doing. For some as you are praying. What you will be receiving is impartation. Some as you are praying. You will not even know what is happening to you. Not every information must be communicated in words. Some truths are imparted. Just do what I am telling you to do. Don't worry about those shouting. Pray in the spirit. Thank you Jesus. Everywhere, inside, outside, you just pray. Show us the secrets of our life, oh God. Show us the way out. Let it come from heaven. Some of you are receiving things just because your mind is not understanding it. You watch and see what happens to you. A few days from now, what you have received will start being revealed to you. And you will see that this is what happened in Koinonia. Oh. 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 Lord, what is the way out for my business? What is the way out for my family? Lord, what is the secret to addressing this barrenness? Lord, what level of unction do I need for this ministry? Why is it not growing? Lord, why is my family stagnated? Why are the works of my hands challenged? Send me help from Zion, O God. Just pray, Koinonia. We are soaking in the glory. Everyone pray in the spirit. Lord, why is my CGPA refusing to rise? What must I do? I have studied. I have done my best.
Go ahead, pray. Lord, what do I need to do? Where is my finances, oh God? Where is it? Where is the key to the next level? What is the formula for my establishment? Lord, how will you bail my family out? Do I just meet anybody? Should I meet a particular helper? If yes, what is the name? Who is the helper? Is he in Zaria? Is she in Zaria? Do I need to go out of Zaria? Lord, what is the thing? Is my ministry in Zaria? Is it in Nigeria? Where is it? Where is my breakthrough? Pray, show me the secrets of my destiny. Go ahead, we're not wasting our time, I, I guarantee you. The Bible says the natural man, the natural man, some of you in the silence, like the dew of Hammon, ideas begin to come. That poultry is my will for you. Don't stop it. That public speaking, you are about to give up, but it is where your finances is. Don't stop. It looks like your church is not growing, but you are called. You just need an upgrade of the anointing. Answers coming from heaven. Spirit of the Lord, we ask you, search for us the deep things. Search the mind of God concerning our destinies, concerning our families, concerning our ministries, concerning our homes. Lord, where will this budget money come from? There is no human way it is going to come. But I know that thou art the fountain of wisdom. It is in your light that we see light. Show me. Show me. Open my eyes. I am tired of doing what everybody is doing. I'm tired of failing like everyone. I'm tired of saying yes to just anybody. Open my eyes. Show me. Pray. Just three or four more minutes. Lord, where is the anointing? Where is the place you want me to be meeting with you for prayer? Is it my room or do I need to go out of my house every night? What is the timing? What is my time of receiving revelation from you? Is there a unique time you want to give me from 12 to 2 every day? Is it a time you are giving me? It may not be so for everybody, but what time have you allocated for my visitation? Do I need to fast once every day? Do I need to go on a drive fast? What do I need to do? Do I need to dance for seven days? Show me, oh God, there has to be a way out. Why are my heavens closed? Why do I fast and pray and yet nothing happens? Why are the nine graduates in my family jobless? Show me. Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Two more minutes, go ahead and pray. Open my mind, open my mind, open my mind. There is a way out. There is a way to the wealthy place. There is a way to the anointing. There is a way to influence. There is a way to access the mysteries of the kingdom. There is a path which no foul knoweth. The wealth of the lion has not trodden there. Show me, oh God, this mystery paths in the spirit. These virgin dimensions in the spirit that mortal men cannot dare tread. Open my eyes, oh God, like a two-edged sword, and let me see the path here marked for my destiny. Hello. 
Just be silent, everyone. Just be silent. Just be as silent as you can. Wherever you are, just be silent. The Lord is putting something in your spirit. Be still and know. Be still and receive. Be still and hear. Be still and enter. Be still and you will know. Just be silent for two or three minutes. God is doing something in your life. Answers coming as words, as impartations. Be still. Some of you, God will be saying, don't waste your time in that direction. That's not the path for your life. Don't waste your time. Be still. Some of you, God will be telling you the change will not come in one day. Just be patient. I will visit your family, but it will take time. Please be patient. Just be patient with me a few minutes and we're done. Be patient. Answers are coming. Think on your business while you are standing. Think on your family while you are standing. Think on your ministry while you are standing. Answers are coming from the throne. Coming from the throne. God is telling you, I will raise help for you. It will not be with your resources that you will make this happen. The helpers are coming. The helpers are coming. The helpers are coming. This sickness is not unto death. This sickness is not unto death. I will give thee health and cure. It is true that the healing ministry is my will for you. It is true that the healing ministry is my will for you. It is true that the healing ministry is my will. It is true that the healing for you. The ministry, the healing ministry, you will walk in it. It is true that the healing ministry is... Just be patient. I see sparks of light. It's a picture of illumination. You are receiving something in your spirit. God is giving some of us clarity. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands and I pray for you by the message of God that the same way God sends me insight by the angel of his presence, I pray for you. Whatever alignment your spirit must take, to not only hear his voice, but receive of the impulses from the throne. I make this happen for you now. In the name of Jesus, I make this happen for you now. Whatever position your ears must take in the spirit, your eyes must take in the spirit to clear up the blurry visions, to make sure that the speakings are clear. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. 
May the grace, the spirit of grace, make this happen for you even in this Easter. Supernatural ideas, innovative ideas, supernatural strategies, the strategies that force things to work. Some of you, this week will not be over until you begin to see the fruits of superior wisdom. This week will not be over until you see things that will marvel you, happening by the Spirit of God, manifesting by the finger of God. You will apply the things that you are receiving and you will watch it work. It was not supposed to work, but because it came by his voice, you will see it rise. I say to you, you will see it rise. I speak to you that you will see it rise. Before the miracle service on Friday, some of you will only come for thanksgiving because before then, that which you have received from heaven will work like fire, will work like fire. Listen, there are some of you, the next meeting you will go for as a man of God, you will be surprised to see the dimension of the operation of the gifts of the spirit. You will go for your meetings and God will give you epochal revelations. You will command the realm of the spirit at your beck and call in dimensions that you will be afraid of. And that one experience will open the doors of finances, open the doors of ministry, increase membership, bring increase for you. Listen, there is a reign of wealth and prosperity that is coming upon this ministry. You hear me as I speak. I don't just talk about money just because, no, 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 no. no. There is a reign, R-A-I-N, of a dimension. I have seen this thing many times in my visions. A dimension. All these miracle alerts are just messages. Do you know why? Because God wants to establish men fast to give us room to serve him. There is a dimension. I want you to write it. Write it down. That there is a dimension. Brothers and sisters, you will see things happen to men you now see that will surprise you. I know this by the Spirit. One of the impartations that we are coming to receive on Friday is this grace for financial exploits. Please believe it. I'm not apologetic about it because we need it. Your heavenly father knows. There are families that must come to just cry and say, God, if you leave us to ourselves, we may not reach the end of this year. I'm rounding up. A precious woman, one wonderful Kaduna family that I love so much. They left to church this morning. While service was going on, in this area, thieves came and buckled their house because of the financial squalor. You can imagine, people now leave and go for work. They went to church, they were praying, whereas robbers buckled their house, packed everything that can be carried pigs, whatever, I, I mean, carried, um, I don't know, they didn't give me the details of what they carried. They entered, came and saw their house scattered because of the wickedness of Satan. Let me tell you this. A spiritual demarcation has been made over this ministry and everyone connected to it. Show me the job in the realm of the spirit. Otherwise, stop wasting your time with CVs around. It will not work. Are you getting what I'm saying? You just get up physically and go and harass your unbelieving loved ones. I've come to you, repent. You must repent. You are fighting physically. And all of a sudden, you receive casualties. But when you invoke priesthood, someone goes to bed in the night and sees a stranger coming and says, it's time for your salvation. And the person is already convicted. Here you come. And you say, look, I want to talk to you about, he helps you and say, Jesus, I've been waiting because Jericho, has fallen are we together 
you meet your destiny helper, Jericho covers his eyes. He is the one, but he cannot see you, and you pass. But when Jericho falls, like the prodigal son, as prodigal as that son was, while the father saw him, the father didn't even say, so what have you been doing? I hear you have been with pigs. He held him. He said, leave the matter of the past now. Let me put a ring. Come, be restored. For by the arm of flesh, koinonia, will no man prevail. You will never get a job just by physical pressing. Believe me, you will never prosper just by doing all of these things. There are many men of God. Some of you are here, wonderful men of God. They are trying to win the battle and rise in ministry physically. Please invite me. Here's my complimentary card. I'm a sound man of God. By God's grace, I'm balanced. I'm this and that and that. You are... And Jericho is looking at you and saying, it doesn't happen that way. Jesus knew this. Imagine Jesus going around and saying, people, come and listen to me. For 30 years, no one was interested in listening to him. But when he engaged the mystery of the priesthood, he came out of the waters, a voice spoke, hear ye him. Publicity or no publicity, everywhere Jesus went, men followed him. Are we, are we together? The Bible says they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Let me tell you, many of you, your victory is already established in the realm of the spirit. But the system for translating it, we are there wasting time doing a lot of things. Many of our loved ones, some of you are here. You thought that, okay, by the time you get a job, it will be all right. You got a job. You found out that the salary was not enough. You prayed for promotion. As promotion came to you, all of a sudden Jericho says, that's not how we win. I'm still here, standing. But tonight, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, let me tell you, you will watch Jericho, just like Babylon, fall before you. It's true. Listen, when you hear people testifying, huh, try to understand what made the miracle work. Because most of what they were doing, they had done it before. Master, we have toiled all night. Jesus said, no, it's not nets that catches fish. Abba, you've been with me. You don't understand how this thing works. Master, we have toiled all night. He said, but I know there is a relationship between you and that fish. And Jesus said, cast your net. The net will be casted, but not before he speaks. It is after he speaks. The CV will be submitted, but not before the priesthood. It is after. Are we together? You will try to have the child, but when you continue the way you are doing, you will keep miscarrying forever. It's not an insult. Let me tell you this. Without the presence of God, there is no human intelligence that has the fortification to destroy an altar whose foundation is spiritual. Let me repeat myself. Without the presence of God, spiritual intelligence, there is no human manipulation that sustains enough power to crumble an altar whose origin is from the realm of the spirit. What is fighting many of us is not physical, brothers and sisters. I know you are born again. I know you love Jesus Christ, but the mystery of covenants are territorial. Jesus has come to your heart, but he must come to your life. Just because you received him into your heart doesn't automatically mean you are free. Potentially, you have come into a kingdom with infinite possibilities. But Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, having their understanding darkened, this is Paul teaching the church in Ephesus. He says, alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Having the, the tragedy is not that God lied, but that their understanding is darkened. And so by reason of the darkened understanding, they have been alienated from the experience of that life. It's not enough to say Jesus died. It's not enough to say I'm born again. If that were it, brothers and sisters, many of our loved ones who have been born again for decades should not be where they were. 
I watch people under the influence of manipulations that are not of an earthly, of earthly origin. And I watch the folly of men, how we do our best. I was once like that, but no more. I'm born again. I've repented. I've seen the foolishness of fighting things physically. It has to be from the realm of the spirit first. Not from the realm of the spirit, whether first or not. The order is first from the realm of the spirit. When you plant a seed, it doesn't start growing outside until the growth happens there. That is the part you cannot explain. When it starts coming out, you can now water it. But the growth there doesn't need your watering. Listen, there are powers that until the mystery of the priesthood and the ark fight, some of us will never experience progress in our lives. We wake up in the morning, we sleep late in the night, we are sincere, but nothing is working. Are we together? Yes. Every time a blessing comes, trouble must ferment itself around a family and drain everything the moment you are rising spiritually how many pastors and churches and wonderful people are like that when you are rising satan doesn't fight you you will think you are victorious the programming he knows how cheap the programming will bring you down so he can as well allow you to rise and you find out for a season everything is working well because it's like a string you will reach a limit it pulls you back are we together? Oh, I want to marry you. No problem. You will even be happy. Three days later, everything scatters. I'm going to give you a job and you find out that Satan does not need to fight you. He already fought you with the presence of Jericho. And God said, guys, the goal is not to stay in Jericho, but you can't let Jericho stand and reach where you are going. Don't pity it. Bring it down. There is a, don't just look at the fence. There are captives in that place. There are treasures in that place. And he said, let me show you. It is not by physical fighting. You don't have any physical weapon that can bring down that fence. Brothers and sisters, Jericho sank flat. The Bible records it flat. This is what is going to happen to many of us tonight. That's why, that's why I, I told you tonight's miracle service is not just for individuals, it's for families. Enough of this fruitless trying, doing everything by strength. There is a system in the kingdom. Are we together? The priesthood. There are some of us here, we're ministry. Some of us probably travel for a long time. We're men of God, we love God. But it looks like there is a peg. Brothers and sisters, let Jericho crumble. And you will see how cheap life can be. There are people who have experienced the defeat of Jericho, but they cannot articulate the system that brought the defeat. Someone stood on their behalf through the ministry of intercession and caused Jericho to fall for them. They just found out that they entered cheaply and even a dagger brought victory. So they can trivialize the existence of Jericho. Jericho is real. If you don't see it in your life, a priesthood already brought it down for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But everyone who must pass. Remember, Israel is God's own people. What is the business between Israel and Jer They had conquered other nations. What do they need the treasures of Jericho? When you read your Bible with an open heart, you will see that there are gaps. You have to be spiritual to get an explanation. I fight... I defeat Jericho and I continue my journey. But I carry Rahab. I carry treasures. There is Rahab there. Without Rahab, there is no Jesus. Without Rahab, the whole fight was to carry treasures and to carry Rahab. Hmm. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh, our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. For.
are soon going to pray. The Lord rejects Saul as a king and now looks at David but there was no priest to confirm what God wanted. The priest that was available still wanted Saul and David could not be king. God Almighty had left Saul and wanted David. Samuel said, no, I still want Saul and God remained helpless. Think about it. God kept begging Samuel, cooperate with me because David will never be king. That God intended it does not guarantee his manifestation. Between God's heart and your result is a priest carrying the ark. That's why you can have a dream. You see yourself collecting a, a job letter. You saw it in 2014, no priest. 2015, no priest. The, your dreams show you Eden. Your life shows you Adulam. It's a system of translation. Are we together? And all of a sudden, the Lord now spoke to Samuel. He didn't quarrel Samuel. He said, Samuel, how long will you keep weeping, seeing that I have rejected Saul as king? Rise up, carry your horn, go to the house of Jesse. Go and anoint the next king of Israel, paraphrasing. And David remained there. I'm sure David will be in the wilderness and say, when will my change come? The change was in a negotiation between God. God already intended, in God's mind, this is the next king. And the king will sit with sheep and say, oh Lord, when will my breakthrough come? And God will say, the day a priest comes. All of a sudden, the priest agrees and God's will continues moving. A priest refuses and God remains. Moses was wise. He said, Lord, I already know you too well. Don't ever let us go here if your presence. If that I could not go before us, I'm not going. No. Moses said, because my going is as good as wasting my time. I, I, I know what is before us. And he said, my presence will go with you. And I will Give you rest. Rest is a gift. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Rest is a gift. My presence will go with you. And I, through my presence, will give you rest. My presence will clear up the spirits. And whatever you do. When you read Second Chronicles 20, the same thing happened. Three kings came together. To defeat the people of God. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, the priests and the musicians were now in front. And they began to sing, you are good and your mercies endure forever. The ark started fighting them. Who is the fool that goes for war with gold in his pocket and silver? And the Bible says, all of a sudden, they turn. Can you imagine allies together? When the ark starts fighting for you, it's fearful. Are we together? fearful you are standing close to danger it never touches you before it touches you something touches it the priesthood the people started killing themselves and the bible says everyone helped to kill another that's not a man fighting that's the ark fighting and all of a sudden when the last two were left he killed one, and the ark said, what are you waiting for? And he carried the knife, killed himself. And when the people came, they found gold, they found treasures. When the ark fights, it fights thoroughly. When you fight, if your hand pains you like Moses and start going down, you see that? They can defeat you. But you carry the ark and let it begin to fight. They kept the ark and they kept Dagon. These people brought an entity, a God, enshrined with spirit called Dagon. The Bible did not show us there were any physical contact. By morning, Dagon fell face forward on the ground. The superiority of the presence of God above any enchantment and any ordinance. When you see the ordinances, 
that have been enshrined by your cultism and all of these things prevail is because the ark has not been lifted. Tonight we have come in this place to initiate a system of priesthood over the difficult situations of people. To say, Lord, if I want you for a few minutes, just suspend the issue of job or whatever. Whether it is job or the issue of delay, it is still the same Jericho causing it. Any part of Jericho is still Jericho. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Jericho that causes failure is the same Jericho that causes barrenness. It is still Jericho. The Bible didn't say Jericho. Do you know, look at the interesting thing. Jericho fell flat, but the woman who stayed in the fence, how God delivered her that she didn't fall flat with it is a mystery we don't understand. But the Bible tells us everything fell down flat. To break every chain. 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 It's to break every chain. Break every chain. Listen, brothers and sisters, we're about to pray, but I plead with you in the name of the Lord to believe this mystery, as simple as it looks, and you will watch the wonder in your life. Stop focusing on physical things. You will cheat yourself a thousand times. Nothing on earth has the ability to stand on its own. If anything on earth stands, there is a force keeping it. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen, the type of sword that kills the enemies is not as important when Jericho is down. Anything can bless you when the realm of the spirit is down. Listen. I have seen anointed men and women of God. People I know love God with all their heart. But they can never prevail in ministry. Because they have been fighting physically. They do everything. And sometimes you wonder and say, ah, look how great this brother is. Look how great this sister is. Is there no ear on earth to hear what you carry and honor you for it? Hallelujah. Listen. People make all kinds of gifts for me, as you can imagine. People make all kinds of gifts. And sometimes I see what people do, and I'm shocked. I say, life is so unfair. How can this brother, this sister be this gifted, and yet be begging? And you see someone come out from somewhere, and priesthood goes before him. And in one week, his life has changed. They can even be sarcastic. Priesthood will make them take life for granted. There is a system of ease that God wants to bring to your life. Please hear me. There are families here listening. You have done all you know. Why don't you allow God? Allow the ark come into your home tonight. And let it go around Jericho. Allow the ark come into your life tonight. Let it go around Jericho. And you will watch that which was dead come alive by itself. Hallelujah. I was told recently about a young man. Very nice, wonderful young man who loves God. Everything you know in life, including good things, fight him. And recently, 
I think something happened. They stole a phone. And the person who stole the phone was within the vicinity of the guy. And he was sitting down. The man kept the phone there. And police came and took two of them together. I got a text. The person sent me a text. And when he narrated everything that was happening, I usually don't call people back. But I was touched. I called him. I said, where are you? He said, Apostle, look at my life. Nothing works. I said, how did you get to the police station? He said that um, they found somebody with phone and carried him. You think that's ordinary? Maybe that young man, breakthrough is coming for him. Another thief from somewhere steals, comes to drop a phone close to you. Does the police not have common sense to probe? And they carry you together because there is a spirit coordinating this. It looks like coincidence. Someone just falls from a chair, just a little chair like this. And all of a sudden, one side of him paralyzes. It's a lie. It's not that chair that paralyzed him. Be smart. People fell from trees plucking mangoes. And they were fine. They cleaned their hands and carried the mango and went away. You fall from a small chair and paralyzes your leg. No. A, a coincidence navigated. The chair was just the scapegoat. It's not about the chair. Tonight, we are going to pray. Before I begin to minister. You are going to say, Satan... So you have deceived me through this situation. I've been focusing on the situation. Whereas it is never really about the situation. It is about Jericho attempting to stand and challenge me. I thought it was all about job. I thought it was all about marriage. I thought it was all about children. I thought it was all about my background. Now I'm learning that anything would have still caused the same problem provided Jericho is standing there but Joshua gather the priests gather the priests gather the priests listen look at me i want you in the mind of your spirit look at that job issue look at that issue and say I will no longer be deceived. You are not the problem. The problem is Jericho. It is never that the business cannot work. It is never that helpers cannot come. Once Jericho is still standing here, nothing can go in. Nothing can come out. Lift your voice and begin Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout it one more time in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I challenge. I challenge the spirits. The spirit. The ordinances. The ordinances. The spiritual forces. The spiritual forces that are responsible. That are responsible for the physical tragedies in my life. Physical tragedies by the mystery of the blood. By the mystery of the blood. I declare. I declare that victory must be established in life. Lift your voice yes. and pray. Yes. Yes. 
le prêtre Boré le Bobara et bon Sexalenzio, ce pauvre le peuple le prêtre Proto, le bon Sexalenzio, le prêtre Proto, 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 Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible tells us, listen, that we have a high priest and that that high priest is a man. The man, Jesus, he qualifies to be a priest, not the spirit, Jesus. The man occupying a priesthood that is higher than the Aaronic priesthood. The Bible says his priesthood is of a better covenant after the order of Melchizedek. A priesthood with no beginning, a priesthood with no end. That there is that eternal priesthood of Jesus. Listen carefully. We are talking about very deep foundational issues here. Jesus, the man, the priest that took his blood... The Bible tells us that he went to the heavenly tabernacle and poured his blood upon that altar once and for all. Once and for all. The advocacy of that priesthood is superior. Listen. Every enchantment and every divination on earth needs the sun to walk or the moon. The Bible says, thou, listen, without the sun, and the moon if god withdraws the sun and the moon every cause every altar dies immediately because every other priesthood on earth or cultic depends on the power of the sun or the moon are we together and so the bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight you will not need it the moon the sun and moon, they are important, but I'm introducing something. Jehovah, God himself, will be the light that sponsors your altar. The same way, listen, listen. That men can say we will do the sacrifice by 12 p.m. When there is a full moon and they stand and manipulate the, the they use geometry and everything to tap the powers of the sun and the moon. And God says these things are inferior. I come with another priesthood, my own self, the son of righteousness. I am the light. Are we together? I want you to be tired of what is happening in your life and family. I tell you the truth. When we begin to pray and I begin to minister, many of you will see cheap victories. Cheap Amen. This is when you will know that this thing is not just about physical efforts. Do you know, brothers and sisters? Listen, let me teach you something. For as long as you keep focusing on individual physical problems, your frustration continues. I can tell you all of them are sponsored by a central force hear me all of them the same electricity is causing this fan to run the same electricity is causing the mic to work if you want a shutdown of the source of the power you can destroy the mic the phone will still work that's what we have come to do tonight a total shutdown then you will find out it was never a financial issue you will find out it was never a health issue. It was never a promotion issue. It was an altar issue. It was an ordinance issue. Pray one prayer before I start ministering. Lord, visit the foundation of every challenge in my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. Everyone that asked receive it. Lord, visit the foundation. 
Why is ministry not working? Why is my spiritual life dying? Why am I not growing in the anointing? What is the mystery of God? Lord, why the circle of tragedies? One tragedy after another. One tragedy. Hallelujah. 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 Please just, just be silent for a moment. I want to start ministering now. Let's just, the Lord is giving me instructions. Just, just be silent. Stand where you are. Um, something is happening inside, outside, everywhere. The Lord is showing me something very strange. Now, um, let me just describe what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that looks like um, this thing people wear. What's the name? This thing that looks like a um, lady's thing that men wear. That, that looks like a... Yes, that, that thing. That's what I'm seeing on many people. And the Lord is telling me on everyone that I see that thing in, there is a very strange deliverance because... That I'm hearing hidden glory. And I want to pray. Please, you don't, don't shout, don't do anything. Just let me flow. You start bringing those people out. I'm going to pray now for those group of people. I'm seeing it. Because I'm seeing that those people, no matter what you do, your glory is never seen. You will struggle and try. But nothing ever happens. Now in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Just silence everywhere. Father, I'm seeing this in the realm of the spirit. And tonight is a miracle service from overflow one, two, three. And the main auditorium and those online. Anyone here that is a victim of this that I see, by the power of priesthood, I come as an ark bearer, an envoy tonight. And Lord, I decree and declare, let there be deliverance now. Right now, right now, right now. Bring them out, I prophesy. I decree and declare, many of you will feel that physical fire upon your head. I'm praying now. Physical fire coming upon your head. Let them go. Let them go. I command liberty. They must go. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I decree and declare, they must go free. Restore their glory now. Jacos kapatariata. Hidden glory. That's what I hear in the spirit. Hidden glory. Hidden glory. There is glory but covered in Jericho. Covered by the fence of Jericho. Everywhere. Inside, outside. I'm praying now. Please just be sensitive. Let's, let's do what God is directing us to do. Tonight there must be total victory. Total victory. Now I'm praying for families. The anointing of God will come on individuals, but it is for families. It will come on you. Once that anointing comes on you now, know that God is visiting your family. Lord, I pray now. I release the sword, the sword of the Lord, in the name of Jesus to every family. If there is a family here whose glory has been buried, nobody rises. Where are they? I decree and declare now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shakata Parakata. I don't know what altar manipulated the glory of any family here, but in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, Matas Katabarata Siadabata, in the name of Jesus. I command now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let there be emancipation. Emancipation for every family. Hidden glory. Hidden glory. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then we beheld his glory. The Lord is still touching people. 
the Lord is still touching people. That's why you came. You have done the listening. Let me pray now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Something serious is going to happen here now. Now, I want to pray a very serious prayer. The Lord is leading me to pray this prayer. I just had in my spirit altars of poverty. Hold on. Just keep your hands lifted. Father, I'm praying. You spoke to my ears altars of poverty. If there is any family here in an ordinance, Shekes Katas, Shabrakatodopa Sabariadabaladaba. Under that cause, nothing works. There is nothing you do physically to be able to bless the family and support the family that works. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, let there be deliverance now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, altars of poverty everywhere overflow one overflow two overflow three online if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose family is under this siege i decree and declare now your emancipation comes tonight For all of you in front here, I speak to the spirits. You know my voice. In the name of Jesus and at the count of three, you let them go now. One, two, three, go, go. Out of them now. Out of every one of their destinies. Out of their lives. Shekatos Kabariata. I invoke a priesthood higher than any ordinance upon their lives. Release their families now. Release their destinies now. You know, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a vision now. You know how it used to be in a slave market that you sell a physical person and collect money. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Like people with only trousers, sold and money. This is exchange of destinies. I believe that this is very prophetic. Let me be honest. I know some of you may not believe it, but the destiny you are living is not your own. A king slaughtered his son so that he will remain alive. There are men that exchange destinies. They, they, a king carried his future and said, Child, the death I'm supposed to die, you die it. There are people like that. The destiny God allocated for you, you know this is not your life. Your dreams and your vision show something else. In the name of Jesus, pray now. Lift your hands. I declare... The spirits that exchange and merchandise the destinies of men by the power of the Holy Ghost at the count of three. If there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose destiny has been manipulated, I command now at the count of three be set free. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now! Be free now! Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Hallelujah. Oh. 
Sephia, Sephia, Sephia. Like Sephia, I'm hearing a name, Sephia. Who is that, please? Let's, let's hurry up. There is a lot to do. I want us to settle down and really pray for the sick. Sephia, who is that? Arise, Hamala Manane Nanamatia. Arise, Arise. Your name is Sephia. How about you, Madam? The Lord will locate the person. I'm standing here and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord touching the person God wants me to speak to. Arise, I'll pray for all of you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I deliver this lady now, this lady on red. I command that spirit that has tied down your life and your glory be gone. For you, it's over now. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be set free right now. Set free, the Lord bring liberty, liberty. Now, I command those altars to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, bad luck, bad luck. I take it out of your life. The spirit of, I'm seeing a lot of bad luck. I take it out of your life now. Release their destinies now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is a lady, a physical person appeared to you in the room. This is a woman whose face you know like a relative. Physically, where is that person please? Someone, you were not dreaming, appeared to you. And there was a conversation from that day. Your life never became the same. Please don't be ashamed. I want to pray for you. Please don't waste our time. We have a lot to do. The Lord is ministering to me. Someone appeared. I'm not saying you were in a dream. This thing is somewhere you had a conversation with someone physical. Who is that person? I want to pray for you. Please, when you find that person, let the person come quickly. Who is Ola? I'm hearing a name, Ola. Ola. I don't know if that's the full name, but there's Ola. O-L-A. There's someone with that name, Ola. Please don't come out if it's not your name. Who is this? Huh? Your name is Ola. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Rejoice. Breakthrough has come to your family. This lady. I'm, I'm Kai. Look at the evil and the witchcraft I see over this lady's family. All these people are... Please help me find out. Why are they here? All of them, their names are all are interesting. Come. That lady with cap, come. Your salvation has come. Come. This lady with... Lift your hands. Over now. Over now. Over now. Calm down. Madam, come. I'm seeing what happened. Yes. yes. A woman appeared to me that it shall be never would be able to physical. Physically. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look at this. When was that? Last year, May. She appeared. Face to face and tell me, it shall never will be able to. No matter how, whatever you take, that you are not feeling fine. The medicine will not work. And from that, hold on. From that day, something started moving in your body. Yes. It will move and come to your back and come to your chest area. Look at this. Are, are you seeing a swelling here? You are seeing this? A woman appears to her. I prophesy to someone here. Jakas koto parakatia. Empreketoso bataria talikata. Anyone in fraternity with the realm of darkness over your life, I curse those people now. I curse those people now. I curse those people now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Madam, I deliver you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, be set free now. In the name of Jesus, the living and the dead don't have anything in common. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is speaking to me. There are some of you, all you see is dead people. All you see is no matter a bulk of your sleep is encounter with dead people. I'm prophesying, lift your hands. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on such people now. 
in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone here in strange encounters with the dead, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I command a separation now. The spirit of Hades, I speak to you. The spirit of Hades, Christ has triumphed over you. Oh, death, take away your sting. Take away your sting. Hallelujah. There are a number of you here. I presume you are all Ola, including this gentleman on wheelchair. That's your son. That's your brother. What happened to him? What happened to him? Accident. Since when? 2015. And he paralyzed you. You can't move now. Oh, dear. We are going to pray for the sick. But I want to pray for Ola now. Just, just stand. Bring for me the person... I'm seeing like a sword coming on one of you now. Aside from this lady, there is, there is an anointing coming on one of you. Let me speak to that one person right now. I'm seeing a closed door. This is someone's destiny. It looks like I'm holding the air, but I'm seeing that I'm holding a padlock in the spirit whose destiny is that among these people standing open 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 now i command that destiny open open now open now open now open now in the name of jesus hallelujah you came alone hold on hold on hold on don't worry, I'll pray for the sick, sir. If, I'm, if I don't talk, are you Allah, sir? No, don't, don't come out until I ask you. This is witchcraft. You would have died since last year, June. Yes, yes sir. It's God that kept you. I will pray for you. I've seen your case already. Okay. If I don't pray for you, in three months, you will not be walking again. Yes. This is stroke. Yes. What is wrong with you? Yes, sir. All my bad. This is what I'm saying. Yes. I'm seeing three months and you're on the bed not to rise again. We have to pray. This is witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Come, my dear, this lady. I'm seeing a very beautiful lady in the physical, in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing an old woman. Hold my hands. What fellowship. The exchangers of destiny. I hold the hands of this lady. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus, let there be a restoration. A very beautiful girl in the physical, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Be free now. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. I command that your destiny be restored. Your destiny be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you standing here. My, my brother, this gentleman, come. What's your name? What do you do? What do you do? I'm a printer, sir. You are a what? Printer, printer. Nothing is working in your life. I need to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I break this embargo I see upon your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. This row, I'm seeing deliverance. Chicken feather. That's what I'm seeing. Chicken feather. This is an ordinance over a family. Just this row. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Kabaroko to sobaria talikata. Jakaske barika to siyanapata. Let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Mama, I know that it's not time to pray, but I want to pray for you. Please come, madam. You came alone. Let her come. You came alone. So one of my uh, son's friend brought me here. When you are talking, everything you say is just about as if you are. Where, where did you come together. from? I come from uh, Samaru. From Samaru. Um, Basawa. No problem, Mama. Yes, I, I want to pray for you because of something I've Thank seen. You, Jesus. Thank you, God. Say after me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The suffering. The suffering. The sorrow. In my, life in my life must end. Must end. 
Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will eat. I will eat the fruit of my labor. The fruit of my labor. Father, by her confession, Amen. let her be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that captivity is over. I pray for all of you now. In the name of Jesus. My dear, don't be embarrassed, eh? Be careful with men. Come. I'm seeing somebody really destroying your life. Don't be embarrassed, eh? You are here. We love you. We don't condemn people, but be careful. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. The deception and the wickedness of evildoers. I pray for you now. Every captivity in our last family, whether male or female, as I stretch my hands over you, I command that it leaves you now. It leaves your family now. I say it again. It leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus. For the last time now, an anointing will come on you. It leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, everybody. Gentlemen, when it's time to pray for the sick, we'll pray for you. Huh? Just be patient. Please help him so that he doesn't strain himself. All of you lift your hands. One scripture... And there is fire to deliver the oppressed now. Why are you here, my dear? You are with him? Oh, it's your daddy. What? Okay. Since then, there is something that has been working on his body. Like you had an snake. accident? Yes, sir. Okay, and what happened? And since then, something has been working on his body, on his stomach, like snake. At times, the thing will... Are you seeing what I'm saying? So it was never about accident, you see. Accident was just the condition... That made this happen. I saw three months stroke hitting this man and him not standing up from the bed again. But the Lord will destroy it. Eh? Just be patient. We want to pray now. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 15. Quickly please. 6 to 11. Exodus 15. We are going to do a quick walk. We need to cast out wicked devils out of lives and families. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed into pieces the enemy. Next verse, to 11. And in the greatness of thy excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood up right as an heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. To 11. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw up my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Next verse. Thou didst blow with thy wind, and the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty water. Who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods? Who is like unto thee? Glorious in holiness, comma, fearful in praises, doing, not delivering, doing wonders. That's what you are about to see now. Lift your hands. He said, I will pursue, I will overtake my lost. My desire will fall upon the people of God. I want to pray. Listen. Deliverance is not just about falling down and rolling up and down. It's, it's, it's bringing the anointing of the spirit to bring a pattern, a separation. The Bible says the river separated Tita and Gita. Separation to allow you move. I want to pray. Are you ready now? Remember. That after they moved the seventh time, it was a shout, Tehillah. A shout, not just any shout, a shout that was sent like a word. And the Bible says the walls of Jericho fell down flat. That shout is what you are about to do. But let me issue a command in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, the one whom I serve and whose I am, in the name of Jesus I declare, over every force in the spirit the covenants and the ordinances of darkness that have held the lives of god's people as they shout this shout wherever they are 
I command those spirits. He said, when they hear my voice, they will run out of their hiding. I command not only an exposition, but a total separation. Are you ready to shout Jesus? At the count of three. One, two, three. In the name of Jesus, I command that fire to fall. Every power, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment. Go now, go now, go now. Every enchantment. Kaparakato soto preketelekata. Every enchantment. Every enchantment. Be free now. Hold on. Hallelujah. I usually don't do this until I'm directed. Hallelujah. I usually see pillars of fire standing by my left and right. I just want to pass through. You don't have to touch me. Except it is not God that has called this meeting. If there is a force and a spirit, it must be exposed as I pass you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I decree and declare right now, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, every power, every force, every power, every force, every power, every force, you must go now, now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, as I pass you that anointing, like fire is coming upon you to set you free. Be free now. Free now, free now, free now in the name of Jesus. Be free now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you outside, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to pass here right now. The anointing of the Spirit is going to begin to come upon you are you ready now thank you jesus you don't have to touch me just just allow me pass be careful be careful father in jesus name let it be over now there is fire now that fire is moving all across now in the name of jesus ordinances be broken now i'm seeing fire just around here where my hands are in the name of Jesus, let there be freedom now. Let there be freedom now. Let there be freedom now. Be free now. Let it be over now. Now, now, now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be free now. In the name of Jesus. As I'm passing close to you, an anointing is causing every power. Let them go. The Spirit of the Lord is telling me to stand here right now in Jesus' name. Let there be deliverance now. Let there be deliverance now from every force of darkness. Every force of every force of darkness. Be free now. I came here because I know that there are so many of you. Look the crowd in this place. I want to pray for you. I'm standing here, my God. Look at the oppression that I see just standing here. I'm about to pray right now. And from the front to the back, from the left to the right, I want all of you to shout Jesus. Something is leaving people already. Are you ready now? Your destiny must be open. Please don't take it for granted. Bring them out now at the count of three. Overflow three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. In the name of Jesus, I command. My God, please help them. Jesus Christ, look what is happening here. From the front to the back, right now, anyone here under the siege of darkness, be free now. Be free now. Help them. Be free now. Lift your hands, overflow three. I'm praying for you. Are you ready to shout Jesus again? There are many of you, you try to move forward, but the force keeps holding you. As you shout Jesus now, you're going to see something leave you. Are you ready? Father, all those who have been held captive, 
I declare that as they shout Jesus, let your fire of deliverance come upon them. One, two, three. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. Go forward. I release you now. Delay broken. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to pray for everybody. But the Lord is saying there are some of you here. The call of God is upon your life. But there are altars fighting you. I'm about to release you. Oh God, I'm seeing 17. One, seven. Where are they, oh God? Right now, to the back. Where are they? They have the call of God. But an altar of darkness. Tying down their lives. Mata soto pakaria kata. Be free now. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Look up, please. There are 11 of you. The Lord is saying it is you that you will use to help your family. And the anointing, that anointing, of that Joseph's anointing, to distinguish you is coming on 11 people. Lord, where are they? To the back. Right to the back. That anointing, a destiny is rising. No, even if you are the last born, I decree and declare, let that anointing find you now. Let that anointing find you now. The Joseph anointing, the Joseph anointing that will cause you to save your brethren. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Overflow three. It's not about falling down, although there are several things happening here, but I want you to just focus. The last prayer I want to pray for you, many of you will be surprised what happens to you. Listen, I'm seeing keys, like a key that was missing. Some of you were once, you were destined for certain things, and the devil veered off your life, and as it is right now, the treasure that God gave you, you have lost it. As I pray for you, that restoration anointing is coming upon you. Some of you is anointings. Some of you is business connections. Lord, where are they? At the count of three. Let that fire come. Shout Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Receive that grace now. Restoration, fire, fire, fire. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. New season. New season. Mama, look at me. It's over. Over. Forever. Over. 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 He's going to use you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone, pray in the spirit. Everyone, pray in the spirit. Everyone, pray in the spirit. Everyone pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Overflow one, pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Overflow one, I want to minister to you now. Listen, please, I want you to believe everything. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands, all of you. There are some of you here, as I'm looking, I'm just seeing chains. 
I want to pray at the count of three. I didn't come to waste your time. Right now, that chain is going to leave people now. Anyone here under the sound of my voice, and there is a chain of darkness overflow one. I declare at the count of three right now, let that chain be broken. One, two, three. I command that chain be broken now. Help them, please. Be broken now. To the back. Shakasko Pariata. Zato Kata. Be broken, broken. Fire is coming. I'm seeing fire moving across the crowd. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break every force, every yoke of darkness. Hallelujah. Are you pregnant? Come. I'm seeing an evil spirit. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go. By the anointing of the spirit, I release the destiny of this baby. You will not lose this baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, help her. This lady, that lady praying in tongues. In the name of Jesus Christ, the grace for dreams and visions, the Lord is releasing it upon you. Great for dreams and visions. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to walk across this crowd. Please, I just want you to release your faith. Release your faith and receive something now. As I walk through, I'm seeing altars and they are living right now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let there be deliverance right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Let that fire. As I move, oh God, let the angel of your presence move. Let there be deliverance. It is over. That's what the Lord says to you. Over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Over. 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 Shabbos Katai. Sheketis Kalabra Katoziata Kata. Over now. In the name of Jesus. Over. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It is over. Please believe as I'm passing you. Don't, don't worry. The anointing of God will locate you. Over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be over now. Now. Over your life. Let it be over. I'm seeing fire moving here like this. Who is that fire for? In Jesus' name, I stretch my hands. Let there be deliverance right now. Supernatural deliverance right now. Supernatural deliverance right now. Mama, be free. Now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural deliverance. Um, I'm seeing a circle here. And the Lord is saying, restoration of ministerial anointing. A circle. Lord, where are they? There are people here, at least four of you. I stretch my hands. Let the anointing locate you. The call for ministry. The call for ministry. The call. Parakato sedekatoshia. Enter. Enter that level. That's what I hear in the spirit. Enter. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is, is it victory or Victoria. I'm hearing a name it's like a victory or Victoria. Who is that? Please, very quickly, want to pray for the sick now. It's like you are wearing something like blue. Blue -ish. Who is that person? What's your name, madam? Yes, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. You've been coming. Madam, look at me. God is going to change your story. Completely. Amen. I don't know you. But yes. the Lord is saying he's bringing breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Hold my hands. Look at me. There is bad luck on your life, my dear. Good things come, but they never stay. And the Lord is saying to take it away right now. Be free. In the name of Jesus, I take away that spirit from your life. I set you free to move forward. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can we go in? Who is Victoria again? All the victories of Victoria be made free right now in Jesus' name. Can we go in from here? Please, everyone, open your mouth and begin to pray. Prophesy. Say, in the name of Jesus, I'm breaking forth spiritually. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's a new level for me. It's a new level for me. Enter a new dimension. Enter a new dimension now. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. I'm passing here now. There is an anointing. Move, move to the next level. I'm prophesying to everybody standing here within the vicinity of this anointing. Step into a new dimension. I release that grace now. 
I release that grace now. I stretch my hands. Everything that has held you down, let it leave you now. In the name of Jesus. My God, look at this. Are you seeing? The legs are rotting completely. In the name of Jesus, be free now. I command be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, my dear. Go home and write it. Good news comes for me in 12 days. Lord, lose their destinies. I'm standing here and I'm, there is an anointing. Let the destiny be open now. Open now. Shaba Sokos Kaliata. Embreketo Sasikete Likata. Jekros Kadabalako In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm standing here and I'm hearing, I have called you. Accept my call. Accept my call. Accept my call. Accept my call. My call is upon your life. My call is upon your life. Stop fighting. My call is upon your life. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. My call is upon your life. Accept my call. My call is upon your life. My mandate is upon your life. My mandate is upon your life. That's what God is speaking. My mandate is upon your life. You cannot fight it. It's an ordinance decided from heaven. My mandate is upon your life. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Pastor Lawrence, speed, come. Where is, where is your wife to become come, come, two of you? I see a grace for speed. Lift your hands. Enter that dimension now. I release that grace. Speed to your life. The Lord is taking away delay. Go and mark it. You are entering a strange level. I see you climbing a ladder. And the Lord is saying it's time for your glory. It's time for your glory. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Collect that child quickly from Kenny. Collect that child. Speed, that grace. Collect that child. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing that grace. A new dimension of speed coming upon your life. A new level of speed coming upon your life. A new level of speed. Hallelujah. Ejimi, I'm seeing something for you. I'm seeing, please stand up. I'm seeing a bottle of oil and I'm seeing dollars. A bottle of oil and dollars. These two dimensions. The spirit and supernatural resources, that grace. The Lord is multiplying it. I'm seeing a bottle, a bottle of oil. A bottle of oil. The Lord is giving you a voice. Not only in the area of finances, but a strange demonstration of the spirit. Please be patient. We are going to pray for the sick, but tonight I, I perceive God is doing something strange. Young man, come. Come. You and this guy, two of you, come, stand. Step into a new dimension. New dimension. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. This guy, just lift your hands where you are. Come. Enter a new level in the spirit. I release that grace now upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at people. And I'm seeing something rising from your stomach to your throat. And the Lord is saying, is the spirit of prophecy. Lord, I'm declaring right now. It's happening to people right now. It will come upon you like a mantle. Prophecy. 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 From your belly. From your belly. Prophecy. I command those rivers. Makato Sakata. Rivers of living water, rivers, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. This lady, come, you, come, quickly. There is a grace, the call of God is upon your life. 
enter that dimension of his grace. May the Lord give you visitations, visitations, visitations. I bring you out of the cage that I see you in. I bring you out of the cage. I bring you out of the cage. I see you inside the cage. I bring you out of the cage. In the name of Jesus, by fire, I bring you out. I bring you out. Ancestry will not fight you. I bring you out of the cage. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're soon going to pray for the sick. Where's, where's your wife? Where is she? The Lord is saying the powers will fight no more. Come. The powers will fight no more. 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 There are ordinances fighting this family. I see it in the spirit. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus, victory is established. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus. And he's stepping to a new level of the prophetic that has always been there. In the name of Jesus Christ. This usher lady, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will begin to see things before they happen. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. God is putting something in your eyes. You will see things. You will see things before they happen. In the name of Jesus, with precision, with precision, and with accuracy. With precision, with precision, with precision, and with accuracy. When are these people that just married this lady in welfare? Where is she now? You and your wife, where are they? She's not around. Stand up. Let me pray for you on her behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying for your mother. Let the Lord perfect her, but I'm praying for you. Something wants to take finances off your life. If I don't pray for you, I see great suffering in the days coming. It's like finance just dries up to the point that even your basic needs you cannot meet. But I cancel it right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. This fair lady, an angel is pouring oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing right now. An angel is pouring oil on your head. Breakthrough, step into a new dimension. Step into a new level in the name of Jesus Christ. A new level, a new level in the name of Jesus Christ. Wato, where is she? Is she here? I'm seeing a flag being raised up, and the Lord is saying it's a new season. I'm seeing a flag being raised up in the spirit. The Lord is announcing you. I'm declaring, let that anointing come upon you. A new season let that flag be raised in the name of Jesus let that flag be raised you will never never be down let that flag be raised in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ we're going to pray for the sick let's just flow God you know sometimes this is this lady you come yes Say for my shame, say it for my shame, I receive double. The Lord is taking me to a new level and I receive it. I lay my hands upon you in the name of Jesus. The grace for a new level is released upon you right now. I command it so, I declare it so. In Jesus' name I pray. This gentleman, you, come. Confusion ends now in your life. I lay my hands upon you. I command confusion to end right now from your life. In the name of Jesus, confusion ends now over your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, confusion ends over your life.
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing, I will, I will prophesy generally, but I'm seeing a family having the breakthrough of a new car. An, an anointing, I'm, 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 it may not look like it's necessary for you, but I'm seeing an anointing locating that family now. This is, this is a, a blessing of a car. You will stand and testify. I don't care whether the resources are there or not. I stretch my hands. Let that anointing make it happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that anointing by the Spirit make it happen right now. Help that person, please. Let that anointing make it happen right now. In the name of Jesus, make it happen. Cameraman, come. I want to pray for you. Look at me. It will surprise you the kind of favor you will start walking in. Amen. You believe what I'm saying? Lift your hands. Father, let this brother drink of the grace for favor. A fresh dimension. A fresh dimension. A fresh dimension of favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady, you, come. The Lord is saying, I'm rolling away reproach from your life. Everything that looks like reproach, I lay my hands upon you. I'm literally feeling like there are holes on your head. And the anointing is going through. I command reproach. Go and never return from her life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to pray for the sick. Please, we're going to be very fast. We're going to be very fast. Listen to me. If you have any cancer related issue or barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i will want to pray for you by myself otherwise overflow one um, i'm in the main auditorium i want you to come out over all the overflows just come to the front stand up stand up come to the front of your projector stands quickly please come to the front of your projector stands for god's sake not to embarrass you, but look at this woman's leg. Look at this. Look at this. Doctor, look at this. Is this sickness? Look at how the whole leg is rotting already. Please, quickly. You're sick in your body. Come quickly. Stand. If the people cannot move, just keep them where they are or bring them close so that you don't... Um... Are we together? Now, we're going to pray. It will be very fast because our time is gone. We want to finish on time. The devil is a wicked person for these kinds of oppression. Are we together? There are so many people in Overflow Tree and... Uh, God will grant grace. Pastor Lawrence, come. You will join them today. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the corporate anointing, we pray. These people have come expecting to be healed expecting to be touched i pray that your anointing will visit them right now in the name of jesus overflow one overflow two overflow three let there be a release of the corporate grace right now in the name of jesus christ we're free now in the name of jesus christ what's wrong with you my dear huh fracture where how long where is the leg it can't move and your hand don't worry it's okay and your legs lord jesus please walk help this lady miracle, in the name of jesus walk my miracle here i release today. that anointing upon you right walk now my miracle, i correct your jesus. body now hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah please stretch your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit if they are still praying for you outside just just continue please if your request is yet to come here you can quickly wave it, wave it, and let the ushers have it and bring it here quickly. Stretch your hands, stretch your hands. By faith, believing that God will visit you.
don't don't stretch your hands out of unbelief if there are requests here to come please let them come here quickly please bring them quickly shabakato soprakato baladabash unto you that answers prayers oh god shall all flesh come rakato sodo brendege barakato shabradiski labaria endakato sata prakato jalabaria kato brendege degodos please pray you are praying in the spirit you are connecting lord we are believing that we will not have to write this again be serious about it make sure you are connected by faith shakato kaparakato barikata sipriada balarabash shakata parakata paroto subriash lord arise in majesty arise in your power visit the case of people change impossible situations in the name of jesus christ Shata prakato barakato barikete kete shelekete pranda kata barakatosh eketo kaparoka tapariata ba lord let this be the last time they will write this in the name of jesus christ let this be the last time they will write this in the name of jesus let this be the last time shapa kata pakata 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 ente keto rakato shada pragata baladaba lord we believe in you arise O oh god of heaven arise O oh god of heaven arise O oh god of heaven visit your people arise O oh god of heaven visit your people shabakata parada baroto soto predegete legata kato prandegate presha da bele de bosh hallelujah 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 please respond with a resounding amen in the name of jesus Father, this is not a ritual. I stand on behalf of your people. Lord, these requests represent different dimensions of demonic Jerichos standing between them and the place of destiny. Father, as I step upon this, let this be symbolic of the ark going around Jericho. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen, you're going to shout jesus we're going to shout jesus seven times are we together as a prophetic act over this i'm going to guide you and you will shout it for every one shout let it represent one day going around jericho that at the seventh time we are agreeing together that no matter what the issue is if you don't believe you will never never see the salvation of god but for believers you'll be surprised father that you hearken to this prophetic act and oh god i stand leading your people as we shout that name the name of our high priest who has been exalted above the ironic priesthood above any kind of priesthood are you ready now i'll call the number and you shout jesus are you ready number one yeah. <laughs> Number two. Jesus. Crumbling every mountain. Number three. Shabakoto Sopataya. Makrotoba. I tell you, I feel the fire of God as we're shouting this Jesus. Number four. Number five. Jesus. Number six. Jesus. I put an anointing on this seven shout. Let this be the shout that crumbles every mountain. In the name of Jesus. Number seven. Jesus. I decree and declare unto you prepare for strange testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ some of you even before you get to your homes or where you came from you will meet it waiting for you like a messenger in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift your hands let's take the prophecy 
And then we'll round up. Every shame and reproach that has lingered in your life, shame and reproach, some of you is a pattern across your family members. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command shame and reproach be rolled over your life forever. Be rolled over your life forever. Be rolled over your life forever. Hallelujah. I release over your life supernatural grace for speed in life. Supernatural grace for speed in life. Supernatural grace for speed in life. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that every garment, he saw Joshua the high priest, and he said to remove that garment. Every garment you are wearing that is attracting bad luck, attracting all kinds of things. The Bible says to give them a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I tear off that garment from your life. I tear off that garment from your life. Garment of reproach. I tear it off from your life. I tear it off from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare divine direction. Lord, what do I do? Where do I go to? Tonight, by dreams and visions and strange encounters, I provoke divine direction to come to your direction. In the name of Jesus Christ, Master, we have toiled all night, but I prophesy to you, go back this time around to the same place you failed. I anoint you, go and succeed. I anoint you, go and succeed. I anoint you, go and surpass the ordinary. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every door that has refused to open, your parents tried, it refused to open. The Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye not doors, ancient doors. I come against every ancient door and every gate. Swing open now in the name of Jesus. Swing open now in the name of Jesus. Swing open now in the name of Jesus. Every help up that must arise tonight, not tomorrow, tonight. Every helper ordained by God to rise up and come to your aid. I provoke favor towards you from them. I provoke favor towards you from them. I provoke favor towards you from them. Listen, whoever has what it takes to help you, in the name of Jesus, I direct their eyes to you. I say it again. Whoever has what it takes to help you, I direct their hearts to you. The same mystery that bound Jonathan and David, I declare, wherever your helper is, let it be as it were for Jonathan and David. In the name of Jesus Christ. All those in ministry here, I prophesy to you, a strange unction upon the work on your hands. Step into a new direction. Step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every family here that has cried, that's all you've known to do. Cry and cry and say, when will God deliver us? I declare that your weeping has endured enough. I prophesy, your mourning comes and with it joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those writing exams, let the mercy of God, the mercy that helped those who went before you, may that same mercy speak for you. May that same mercy speak for you. May that same mercy speak for you. Hallelujah. There are people here, you are sensing that your spiritual life is dry. It's not like you don't love God, but 
revelations, they don't come as they used to come again. Sometimes you open your Bible, you cannot even read. To pray, you are sensing something is wrong. It's like you know your spiritual life is under attack. In the name of Jesus Christ, I launch you to the new, a new insight, a new dimension of encounter. A new dimension of encounter. A new dimension of encounter. The Lord will open your eyes to not only listen to teachings, but to get the spirit of the message. There are some of us, the devil has cheated us by allowing our prayer altar go down. In the name of Jesus, tonight let fire from heaven fall upon your prayer life. Let the quickening of the spirit fall upon your prayer life. Every wrong friend in your life, whether you want them to go or not, in the name of Jesus, for the sake of God's hand upon your life, I separate you with them forever. This night, I separate you with them forever. Time wasters, destiny wasters, I cause a separation between you and them forever. We're rounding up. Some of us here are plagued with the spirit of laziness. Spiritual laziness, mental laziness, physical laziness. The Bible says a lazy hand, a slothful hand will, that a one that deals with a slothful hand will beg. He will become poor. I decree and declare the spirit of productive diligence. Not just diligence, the spirit of productive diligence. I release it upon you right now. Are you ready to receive favor? I will continue to pray favor upon your life until it works. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Even if you have seen favor in your life, by the grace of God, I release you to a new order of favor. A new order of favor. A new order of favor. Favor is not when you have money. Favor is when men arise by God to meet your needs. If you have money and men don't come to your life, you are not favored. You are only prosperous. You are not favored. Favor is when men arise that before you call, they come. They don't come and go. They come and stay until the purposes of God have been achieved. I call them now from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Help us of your destiny. May they appear before you in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what personal request you desire from God, but I release my faith with you. And I declare that by miracle service may, you will only return rejoicing over that issue. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a good job, not just a job that you look like a slave, a job with honor. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you. Between now and next miracle service, may God bless you with a job that will launch you to a new dimension. Everyone in business here, the God factor, the favor factor, the help factor, the Ebenezer factor, I release it upon your business. I release it upon your field of endeavor in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, where thou hast been rejected so that no man will pass through you. It says, I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I decree and declare, may your gates be continually open. Now, I want to pray a prayer that may be very strange for some of us. I want to pray that somebody will give you money. Listen. Hold on. Listen. We are not money mongers. This is not some carnal thing. There are some of you, this is what you need. You don't need advice. You don't need counseling. You just need help. Straight help. I pray for you. You will be surprised. It will look like a dream. I pray for you. Not a helper, not access. Thank God for it. 
but a helper that will come with the financial resource to help you. I stretch my hands and I release it upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The anointing for miracles. Help that guy. The anointing for signs. The anointing for wonders. Whether you are called in ministry or not, in the name of Jesus, may you carry it in your spirit. From today, begin to reproduce a new order of signs and wonders. And finally, I pray for you. Whatever needs to be done for your family members to rejoice in the Lord between now and the next 30 days, whatever needs to be shaken, whatever needs to be overturned, in the name of Jesus Christ, joy for your family members. Joy to your family members. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for every, for every worker here. In the name of Jesus Christ. After tonight rise with a new level of evidence become a testament not just a testament of a believer in Christ but a testament that you belong to this spiritual family the grace to prove it let it be released upon you in the name of Jesus whoever fights you may he find himself fighting himself whoever fights your family may they fight themselves they will point the knife at you and hurt themselves. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto pray kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.